I'd like to call the sixth regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Mayor. In so many ways, communication begins with mutual respect for all, not just a few. Communication should inspire others to do their best. Thank you for that thought. And now could you please call the roll? Uh, yes, there are 16 present with two remotely present. So Alder Persons Andy Ross and Roman Duran are both attending the council remotely. Uh, we have a special guest tonight to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Eagle Scout Matthew Schmeiser of Troop 801 from Grace Episcopal Church is here. His Eagle project uh, was completed on November 12th of 2016, constructing colorful trellises at the Meals on Wheels location. His project was designed to grow food and help with the bee population and catch the eye of those passing by. Congratulations on your project, Matthew. Please step up here and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Matthew, thank you for joining us. Let's give you a hand for his work. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next item is public forum. Turn it over to the city clerk. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, this evening we have five people on public forum. First on the list would be Rose Phillips. Rose, are you here? Rose, you want to come on up to the mic here, please? Just hold on just a second. We want to get this call in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we'll go on with, <clears throat> excuse me, Rose, can I have your home address, please? Yes, my name is Rose Phillips, and I reside at 1628 Spruce Court in the city of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Am I ready to begin? Or? Are ready to begin. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, a little bit about myself. I chose to pursue an education in the field of science with a desire to better understand the world around me and its complex interactions. My scientific research experience involves the study of effects of invasive shrubs on the understory flora in a mixed woodland <coughs> community. My work is scheduled to be published in the September issue of a scientific journal called Ecological Restoration. Firstly, I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I speak for myself as well as on behalf of many fellow community members who share my concerns. I would like to start this off by asking that we all be honest with each other and recognize that this is a vote for, this vote for annexation is really a vote to move forward with Kohler's Golf Course proposal. Should the annexation be approved, the subsequent agendas would include discussions about a conditional use permit that would be necessary to follow through with gol the golf course plans. This is merely a stepping stone to Kohler's end goal. I would hope that the city of Sheboygan would hold Kohler accountable for complying with all the necessary steps for such a process should this move forward, just as the town of Wilson has thus far. As others have previously pointed out, I also question the contentious method that Kohler has chosen in this annexation pursuit, as well as the necessity of it. For the past three years, the town of Wilson board has been diligently working with Kohler on the golf course proposal. No concerns were ever raised regarding the town's fiscal stability, municipalities, or emergency services. Suddenly and secretly, Kohler went behind the backs of the people of the town of Wilson to request this annexation that we are here to talk about today. Furthermore, Kohler bought houses in the annexation path and placed renters in them, likely choosing applicants that would provide him a vote in favor of his annexation plans. 
This all seems very manipulative and disingenuous to me. I would like to remind you that a certain level of skepticism is healthy and even a sign of intelligence. And I ask that you do not immediately buy into Kohler's big ideas and instead choose to look critically at this request and consider the motives behind it. I would also like to point out that it was recently brought to my attention that one of the aldermen on this council is a Kohler employee and has connections with Whistling Straits Golf Course. I believe that the ethical and responsible decision for this person would be to step down from voting on this issue since there appears to be a conflict of interest here. I do not believe that Kohler is looking out for his community. Rather, he is trying to feed his insatiable appetite for money, power, and prestige. In fact, he will try to knock down anything or anyone that gets in his way. 150 acres of old growth forest, ancient wetland ecosystems, the town of Wilson people, Please don't think that this will be any different. The assertion that approving the annexation will benefit the city economically is entirely hinged on the approval of the golf course. What happens if the annexation is approved but the golf course is not? How would that affect the city economically? And have you entertained the idea that this could result in an economic disaster if these proposals are approved? Think about these things for a second. Science explains that gravity exists, that soil is permeable, that water cycles, and that chemical runoff from industry and agriculture are degrading the quality of our waterways. Informed with this knowledge, we can assert that regardless of what the Kohler Company claims, pesticide and fertilizer runoff from this proposed golf course will absolutely occur, and this would certainly result in further reduction of the quality of our water. When our wa water quality is compromised, we all pay the price. Our natural resources are the very thing that sustains us. Our industries, our agricultural systems, our recreational opportunities, and our economy are all interconnected with the health of our water. Anything that aims to destroy our natural resources is suicide. Water is the most essential element to life on Earth. We literally cannot live without it. Not you, not me, not even Mr. Kohler. It is the, thing, the one thing that all of us in this room and on this planet have in common. We need water to survive, clean water, water that we can trust. And it isn't just humans, it's everything that lives. All life forms require water for survival. We cannot simply think about short-term potential monetary gain. We must think about long-term effects for the future generations. We cannot create water. What we have is what we get. Of the total number of uh, volume of water on Earth, only 2.5% of that is fresh water, and less than 1% of that is available to us. The Great Lakes Basin contains 95% of the fresh surface water in North America. The Lakewide, Lakewide Action and Management Plan for Lake Michigan was created on behalf of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, which was established between Canada and the U.S. to protect and restore the Great Lakes <coughs> ecosystem. They made this statement, which I think encompasses the aspects I have addressed. The significant natural features of Lake Michigan, such as its encompassing the world's largest collection of freshwater sand dunes, supporting 43% of the Great Lakes' large sport fishing industry, and providing drinking water for Excuse over me, 10... Rose. Five minutes, I'm sorry. I have one, two more sentences. Is it okay if I finish them? Just go ahead and quickly do it. Thank you. Provides drinking water for 10 million residents, and this means billions of dollars not only to the economies of the four states that share the lake, but also to the nation as a whole. If you care about the financial stability of our city, then you must care about the sustainability of our natural resources as well. For this reason and many others, I ask that you vote no for the annexation, even if it is just for the time being, so that the proper research and analysis can be completed. Thank you for your time. Next on our list is Rebecca Clark. Rebecca, are you here? Rebecca, you want to come on up to the mic, please? And Rebecca, can I have your home address, please? It's 735 Fairway Drive in Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Whew. Here we go. Members of the council, I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight about the annexation and zoning in the town of Wilson for the proposed Kohler Golf Course. I feel a lot of weight on my shoulders tonight, as there are a lot of people here that also want to speak on this subject. I'm sure you feel a great weight about this decision as well. <laughs> And I don't envy you. I know this council works hard to make life better for the citizens of Sheboygan, which is why I hope you will vote no on the annexation and zoning proposal. My reasons are not so much about what we know regarding this proposal, it is what we don't know. 
I have concerns that much of the financial studies of this golf course were done by Kohler's firm and have not been independently validated. Can we be sure that the financial gains to the city of Sheboygan will be accurate or sustainable? Do we know if it's worth the added burden on our fire and police staff? Are we giving up a lot of unknowns for about $79,000 a year in taxes? I have concern about the water infrastructure. It is not clear in this current agreement if this course will rely on city water or a well identified in the town of Wilson. In the current agreement, Kohler maintains rights to their identified well for three years. But when does this start? At the beginning of construction, at the end, are these years going to be contiguous? And I haven't seen the well remediation plan for those living in the area whose residential wells, wells could be affected by potential drawdowns. The possible effects on nearby streams and wetlands are also not well addressed. I have concerns that the city is getting into a contractual agreement without all the financial responsibilities being clear. If the golf course utilizes city water systems for irrigation, potable water, toilets, and septic, who will pay for the implementation of this new system? How will the cost of filling that massive retention pond on the course be covered? Will resident costs go up? Finally, I have concerns that this whole process may be an end run around our neighbors in the town of Wilson. If those residents decide to sue over annexation, can we afford those litigation costs? and cost to the reputation of the friendly city of Sheboygan. I know there was public input at the city planning meeting, but why are pieces of information critical to this process only coming out after public records requests? Why are there so many closed door meetings? It is especially critical in these days that the citizens of Sheboygan feel projects that the city undertakes are done openly, honestly, and are not rushed in any way or done behind closed doors. I know this council is steeped in finding ways for the city to grow and prosper. I am really excited about such ventures as the updates to the downtown, uh, the Lake Michigan Marine Reserve, and being home to the best surfing in the Midwest. I too want Sheboygan to grow and be a great destination for all visitors, not just golfers. I really hope that our efforts here are for sustainable growth and we are considering not just potential financial benefits and the satisfaction of those who visit here, but also the health of our natural resources, our reputation and the happiness of those who have lived here for decades. I ask you to vote no on annexation. More time is needed to fully understand the long-term impacts of this project on our fiscal bottom line, our natural resources, and our residents. I ask you to think creatively. If the city of Sheboygan pitched an alternative use for Kohler's land, for instance, a Native American Museum of the Great Lakes, which was LEED certified, accessible, affordable, and offered unique interpretive displays, this would be an endeavor I feel that our community could get behind. As a community, we can be proactive in filling needed niches as a tourism destination versus allowing one vision and one stakeholder to dictate options. The Kohler Company has done a lot of good for this community, and I know that the council and city staff can negotiate with Kohler to hold off until this project is fully vetted and best for the community as a whole. So keep your doors open, keep it honest, and please vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Next on the list is Jim Van Akron. Jim, if you could come on up, please. <coughs> and Jim, can I have your home address? Sure. It's 432 Lincoln Avenue in Sheboygan. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been a lifelong resident of Sheboygan, and I'm here to address the proposed annexation of the Kohler Company property in order to build a golf course there. First of all, I want you to be aware, as a former school board member and deputy district attorney, I understand the interrelationship between economic growth and property tax revenue, but this should, be not, this should not be our sole focus. <clears throat> I'm not here to vilify any, anyone involved in the process. I came here because I oppose this use, the use of this gem of a piece of the land for purposes of a golf course. The, the famous Wisconsin conservationist Aldo Leopold once said, examine each question in terms of what is ethically 
and aesthetically right, as well as what is economically expedient. The use of this land does not appropriately balance economic consideration with conservation and environmental needs. I personally am quite familiar with this land. For years, the Kohler Company graciously allowed public access to this beautiful piece of property. From childhood on until Kohler Company ended access, I have hiked this land and observed it in its natural state. It is a thing of beauty with its dunes, wetlands, variety of trees, other plant life, and wildlife. There are a few sand dune lands with forests and a stream running through it that exist on this side of Lake Michigan. It pained me to hear that as a city government, you are not invited to go on the property. I highly recommend that before you make any decision about the property, you do ask the Kohler Company to allow you to do so. Also, that you would have an impartial, trained naturalist with you so they can help educate you on the environment that you are traveling through. You cannot truly understand the value of this land as it now exists without doing so. To use Aldo Leopold's words, you cannot examine the question of annexation without looking at what is ethically and aesthetically right, along with looking at the economic impact. As a Cola Company sustainability website states, we believe knowledge empowers choice. Before you make any decision about this property, you need to know more about this property. Go see it. Some may say it's only a small project. In the world at large, what difference does it make if a golf course is built there? This is not the ethical and aesthetic way of, dress of addressing this issue. <clears throat> Every degradation to our environment has an impact. The cumulative impact makes a difference. You have an opportunity here to act in a progressive manner and address the impact this golf course has on our environment. We, do, we all want to do the right thing for our environment, and perhaps you do in many ways, such as recycle, pick up trash, plant trees. This is a real environmental choice for you as council members. Do not think of this as purely in, in economic terms. You can make a positive difference in this community by voting no on this proposed annexation and development agreement. As I said before, I'm not here to vilify any party in this matter. Through my professional responsibilities and volunteer activities, I recognize that the many good works the Kohler Company and family have provided to this community and beyond. My point is this is the wrong project for this piece of land. The Kohler Company is very creative and capable of finding a more appropriate project for this land. I am convinced that a golf course is an abuse of this land. No matter what environmental accommodations a Kohler Company says it is making in its plan for the land, it, it is still a golf course with fairways, greens, buildings, parking lots, and roads where a natural environment previously existed. As, as Leopold states, we abuse land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. I like quotes, and my final comment is another quote from the Kohler Sustainability webpage. This is a post that they made on Earth Day. They ask, what are you doing to make a positive difference this Earth Day? It goes on to say that Kohler believes that Earth Day is every day. So the question for you as a city council this Earth Day, in other words today, is what are you going to do to make a positive difference? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Next on the list is Dr. Ray. Is Dr. Ray here? Dr. Ray. All right, can I have your name, please? Uh, Greg Gross, G-R-O-S-E. And your address, Greg? N6683 Meadowbrook Lane, Sheboygan. Send Greg up here. Okay. You will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Greg Gross. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Prevea Health in Sheboygan. I'm speaking on, a, on behalf of Prevea Health, but also on behalf of Dr. Ashok Rai, who is not able to make it for the comments tonight. Uh, Dr. Rai writes, thank you for the opportunity to offer my comments to the City Council regarding the annexation of property, which includes the proposed 
Kohler Golf Course property to the city of Sheboygan. Uh, Dr. Rai is the president and the CEO of Purveya Health. And as Purveya Health, we are Northeast Wisconsin's largest physician-owned multi-specialty group. More than a quarter of our company is located here in Sheboygan County. And uh, Dr. Rai wishes to uh, support, his, uh, support the project and the proposed annexation. Our group of Purveya Health has directly witnessed the positive impact uh, economically of the expansion of destination Kohler properties. Their expansion, especially in the realm of golf, has provided jobs, increased tourism spending in our community, and this has helped Purveya Health attract potential new employees into the area. We truly appreciate the past and ongoing investments of the Kohler Company that has been made in this community, and we believe this project has significant potential for the city of Sheboygan and that it will add to its past successes that we've experienced. As a medical practice, Purveya Health believes in the ongoing economic development of the city of Sheboygan. The proposed annexation will expand the city's tax base, create new local jobs, and make Sheboygan a more desirable place for both residents and visitors alike. Just as important to us at Purveya Health is the thorough manner in which the proposed golf course has thoughtfully addressed potential environmental issues. We have a passion for the environment. 50% of the common stock at Purveya is owned by Hospital <coughs> Sisters Health System, locally St. Nicholas Hospital, which is a Franciscan-based ministry. Through our partners and their dedication to St. Francis, we have learned a great appreciation for the environment. We demonstrate that appreciation in multiple ways from our own construction processes, our aggressive management of electrical resources, and an extensive recycling program. It is through that lens and the many benefits to the city that we have reviewed this project, and we find it to be extremely thorough in its approach. All of our major concerns around the impact to the environment have been answered in a thorough manner, and we see many benefits for the city of Sheboygan. In summary, we support the project and the proposed annexation and respectfully encourage the City of Sheboygan Common Council to approve the related matters before you today. It is our belief that the project is good for Purveya Health, good for the City of Sheboygan, and good for the region that we all call home. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Next on the list and last on the list would be David Aldag. Is David here? Or we'll go get David, he may be in the other room. <laughs> Hi David, could you give me your home address please? Sorry? I'm, could you give me your home address please? Oh sure, uh, 4904 Barrenwood Way, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm Dave Aldag, the chairman of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. I'm representing our organization as a supporter of the proposed Kohler Company Golf Course Project, also proposed to be on the city's south side. Our board, consisting of 32 business and economic leaders, representing all the municipalities of our county, voted overwhelmingly to support this project. We support positive economic development in our community, and this project is a great example of that, as well as being consistent with our mission statement. The project as stated will bring annual revenue of $6.5 million in Sheboygan County, as well as a large number of full and part-time jobs. The tax revenue, which can be used for countless needs, such as road repairs, infrastructure improvements, school improvements, et cetera, is estimated to be $475,000 per year. We, as Sheboygan County residents, watch with great pride as major TV networks showcase the Kohler, Kohler golf courses that hosted several PGA championships, as well as two U.S. Women's Opens. We also watch national coverage as recently as this past week of the U.S. Open played at Aaron Hills another great golf course in our state. At the onset of the tournament coverage, there was a feature piece on the evolution of golf in the state of Wisconsin and a timeline that stated that the Kohler golf courses put the state on the map toward being a major golf destination and host of major golf tournaments. 
The piece ended stating that now Wisconsin has elevated itself to the number two golf de destination in the entire United States. And also mentioned we'd likely be number one if not for our winter weather. The exposure of a major golf event is known to create a spike in tourism dollars for a continued period of time after the tournament leaves, which is another added benefit of national exposure and reputation. We now have an opportunity to add to that positive exposure of our wonderful community, our beautiful lake, world-class golf courses and restaurants and resorts. We can, all show, we can also showcase our people, honest, hardworking, friendly, and proud of our community. The Common Council has a chance to make this project a reality for our community. This is an opportunity that we are fortunate to have, and they don't come very often. In closing, we believe this project will be a benefit to not only Sheboygan, but Sheboygan County. It would be a shame to have a loud minority influence the outcome of this project just because they may not agree with it when the facts suggest otherwise. We're blessed as a county to have many companies, such as the Kohler Company, who are willing to reinvest in the community they call home. If you stop about what we would not have without their investment, our community would not be what it is today. Today we are something better, a true destination to raise a family, a wonderful place to retire to, a vacation destination, and we're only going to get better together. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, David. That's it for this evening public forum. Thank you very much. We're going to skip the mayor's announcements because of the items on our agenda tonight. Uh, at this time, I'd uh, like to entertain a motion from Alderperson Wolf on the hearing that we have before us. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. No, no, we need a motion on the, uh, the hearing. Sorry. Open the desk. That would be nice. A motion to? Motion to approve. No. A motion. Make a motion to accept and file all over. All yeah, just need the, the uh, motion on the, uh, the timing of the hearing. Open it. The document was on your, t on your desk. Yes. I would move to open the hearing on the proposed SR5 zoning with the following guidelines. Number one, the purpose of the public input session is to hear testimony as it relates to postponing zoning to the suburban residential five classification. Number two, person speaking be limited to three minutes for their comments because, because we have a full agenda. Number three, for the public record, Please state your name, your address, and whether you are, you are city of Sheboygan resident or a town of Wilson resident. The name, the names of who's attending, uh, who checked uh, that they are wanted to provide public input at the meeting will be called first. After the group, the chair will ask if anyone else would like to pr provide input. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and be, to be recognized. After being recognized, please come to the podium and state your name, your address, and whether you are a City of Sheboygan resident or a Town of Wilson resident. During a hearing, the City Council only receives citizen input and does not respond or debate. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Hearing uh, is number four of 1718, pursuant to the notice published and the personal notices sent out by the city clerk. There's a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city zoning official map to establish use district classification of property, uh, being the entire area included in the annexation petition to class suburban residential five. And I'd like Chad Pelichek to give us a brief explanation of the SR5 suburban residential classification. So according to the city's zoning ordinance, this district is intended to permit development which has moderate density in a suburban community character. Density and intensity standards for this district are designed to ensure that SR5 district shall serve as a designation which preserves and protects the suburban residential community character of its area. The district provides for permanent protection of moderate 
density residential area for those who live in a suburban residential environment and who retain enough land with their residents and or in development to ensure that the suburban community character is maintained as long as SR5 designation is retained. Um, this zoning classification is the least dense of the zoning classification. So if you look at the city's uh, zoning map, you'll see that SR3 uh, primarily picks up kind of the more outside the core areas. And then uh, the next layer, if you will, is the SR5 zoning designation, which is really consistent to um, what's proposed tonight into the land uses and the zoning that's already in the city limits in this area. So. Um, the staff had recommended that the, it made sense as the SR5 zoning, and that's the zoning um, that would fit the character of this area. So if there's any questions on that I'd be happy, from the council, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Chad. Okay, we'll begin the calling up the people who signed up to speak. The first one up is Claudia Bricks and Steve Cassidy are on deck. Would Claudia please come to the podium? And Steve, you can uh, use the uh, on-deck chair up here. I'll have it going, if you want to, somebody, uh, Chad, do you want to pull the podium out closer there so they can see the timer? I have a timer. Well, oh. yeah, we're going to use the one that I've got. Give me a minute. So that they can see on the screen. So do you see where the timer will be? It's up on that screen, okay. and then it'll show you when the three minutes are up. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Claudia Bricks. I live at 314 Pioneer Road in the town of Wilson in, um, with my Sheboygan address. Um, I'm trying to understand this whole zoning um, ball of wax that has been thrown at us, and I'm, I'm not quite sure that I understand it. But I would like to give a little background of where I have come from and where we are, are kind of headed. Three years ago, I and several others founded the Friends of the Black River Forest, whose mission is to oppose the construction of a golf course in the Black River Forest and to promote the preservation of the integrity of that river, its wetlands, the adjoining Lake Michigan shore as an ecological whole. How that fits into city zoning, I'm not quite sure. We started by writing kind letters to Herb Kohler, asking him not to destroy this wonderful land. Claudia, with, again, we're addressing SR5 zoning. I'm getting to that. Okay. Well, please get to it. Okay, with an unnecessary golf course, no response. As the word got out, our small group quickly grew to many others from around the country. We have over 8,000 signatures on our petition. We've held fundraisers to hire experts to understand what's happening with this land. We've hired attorneys to guide us through this complex process that's involved with all of the zoning ordinances, the permits, and the applications that are needed for this golf course. And as I understand it, the city wants to zone this into SR5, which makes not a lot of sense to me because the golf course um, doesn't fit into that. In those three years, we've, we've twice gone to Madison, we've spoken to DNR, our legislators, we've been regular attendees at our own town board meetings to understand zoning ordinances. We've spoken at all public hearings, written many letters, sent out hundreds of emails to form everyone about the short and long-term problems with this project. Despite all of this, the process, we want it to be transparent and ethical as possible. We've discovered that really matters is big money big power and big influence. And sitting here tonight, I see lots of people that are concerned about this zoning ordinance. And I'm here to say that to vote no for this until you've had a chance to study this and understand what we at the Friends of the Black River Forest have been looking at for the last three years. You've been looking at it for one month. So I ask you to vote no on this. It's the wrong place for a golf course. And it's wrong that the balloon on the string annexation has been pushed through despite the wishes of the town of Wilson residents. There are many other uses for this property, and I would encourage this body to take a look at those. Thank you. 
Steve Cassidy is next, and James Tober, please come up to the on deck side. James Tober? Tobin. Tobin, sorry. Mr. Cassidy. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Common Council. My name is Steve Cassidy. I'm the Vice President of Technical Services for Kohler Company. <coughs> Speaking on behalf of the company with property at 1739 North 6th Street in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you for the opportunity to pro uh, provide input pertaining to the establishment of zoning for uh, the property this evening. At this point, some city zoning classification has to be as assigned. For our proposed golf course site, privately owned golf courses are considered conditional uses or outdoor institutional uses in all city of Sheboygan zoning districts. Uh, so the classification of the annexed territory, uh, if approved this evening, uh, almost any of the zoning districts uh, could work for uh, this project. However, SR5 zoning ensures that the existing homes remain permitted uses and do not become non-conforming uses within the uh, applied area. SR5 is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan, including the planned use map and the city's comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Furthermore, it allows the city to grow and it creates significant new tax revenues and new employment opportunities in the city of Sheboygan by facilitating the development of other vacant land, including land currently owned by the city for much needed housing. We respectfully encourage your support for the SR5 zoning before you today, and we look forward to a positive working relationship with the city in the months and years ahead. Thank you again for your consideration. I'm available to respond to any questions the council members might have. I have a question on your address. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, that's not allowed. It's been given. I don't believe you live there. It's been given, and we're, we're done with that. Thank Any you very other much. questions from the council, common council? We don't have any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Tobin is next, and Tom Stelb is on deck. My name is James Tobin. I live at 317 Pioneer Road. It's in the town of Wilson, close to the fire department, 200 yards from Lake Michigan, and a short walk from the northern boundary of the Kohler land. I have just a couple of comments uh, pertinent to the zoning. First of all, I don't know how, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know how you can be talking about zoning of land you don't own yet. And everything I want to say relates to an old maxim, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. First of all, uh, you don't have it yet. Even if you pass this session tonight, there will surely be a lawsuit from the town. And I spoke to the uh, town's attorney after a meeting. He didn't want to say very much, but he did say that of um, the cases that have been litigated uh, on these, say, say, balloon on a string type of annexation, which is a hostile takeover, uh, the results have been mixed. So you have by no means assured of winning such a lawsuit. Second, um, the town of Wilson has been waiting for years for the Kohler Company to complete all of the details needed to get the permits that were essential for a golf course through the DNR and the... Mr. Tobin, excuse me, but you need to bring your comments to the SR5 zoning. That's what we're having a hearing for, not, the, not all the other items related to a golf course. This is a hearing for the zoning that would be attached to the parcel if it's annexed by the city. Please bring your comments to that subject. I don't know how you can do a zone if you don't own it. My other point was has to do with the what you have to go through to own it. You need to get the permits. The Kohler Company is very slow to provide the detailed information the DNR and the uh, 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 Army Corps of Engineers has been demanding. It seems to be this highly relevant to your zoning question. How can you zone something that is not yet approved? and it can't be approved until all the data goes through. So I would beg of you to uh, hold off on any decisions until you have got this all clear. One more point, if you actually do succeed in getting this golf course, I believe there are conditional units, things related, and this is clearly a matter of zoning, uh, please do not allow them to block the public right of way, which is below the high water mark on the beach. As I understand, they have not 
complied with this up at uh, Hoi Haven. Uh, so make sure they don't have a big set of rocks out into the water. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Stelb is up next and Mary Fadish is on deck. Now, the public forum that was held earlier was a more general hearing and, and, and it had a more wide-ranging opportunity for people to speak. This is a hearing on the SR5 zoning. Please keep your comments to the zoning issue. Can I include uh, annexation comments in along with that? Yes. All right. My name is Tom Stelb. I'm a Town of Wilson supervisor and I live at 814 Indian Mound Road in the Town of Wilson and uh, I am a Town of Wilson resident and I'm here to ask that you consider voting against the annexation. You should have received an email from the Town Chairman John Eman explaining the Town's position on this. I'm also wondering why this is to be zoned SR5. That de designation doesn't seem to fit. When I went, for, I went for a walk around my neighborhood and asked a number of town residents if they were in favor of or against the annexation, and everyone that I had talked to was definitely against it. But I had uh, I understand that there's some comments from an alderman that uh, he had also discussed that informal poll with town residents and that he had found many of that were for it. My own informal poll shows otherwise. And the question I have to ask is, is with Riverdale being annexed in, are they going to have to, uh, how is it going to work with Riverdale? They're going to have to have two liquor licenses for their golf course. They're already upset that their taxes are going to be going up. And the other landowners that are on involuntarily being annexed into the city are concerned about their taxes going up. It's unfair to those owners who are being involuntarily annexed into the city. As the letter explains to you, it, it, that the annexation will be problematic for both communities. I believe that you need to take a step back, slow down, and take a good look at the issues and problems that will be created with this proposal. The DOA re reports cites the fractured lines between the city and town uh, at, at the borders with the fractured uh, town lines. Th those annexations at that time were of the unanimous type of annexations where the landowners agreed to annex into the city. Those that wanted to go into the city did. Those that did not, didn't. This created the bordered lines that exist today. To compare those annexation lines that created and the lines created by them to the issue at hand today is comparing apples to oranges. Thanks. Mary Fadish is up and Debbie Desmolin is on deck. My name is Mary Fadish. I live at 5631 Driftwood Lane. I am going to get uh, to the point of, annex uh, of zoning, so I'd appreciate being able to get to that point. Good evening. In a response from one alderman to a letter of mine, the alderman wrote that he understood this could become an emotional issue for some, but this was the only way Sheboygan could grow, an emotional issue for some. Our group, Friends of the Black River Forest, follows the many environmental crises occurring now throughout the state. <clears throat> right now, there are nervous parents wondering if their children will recover from the fecal contamination in their water. They believe that someone should have protected them. They are emotional. Every one of our Mary, state's crises Mary, started get uh, getting zoning. there started with someone approving a permit and allowing it to go unregulated. Each local government could stop these contaminations that are going on in the state. It starts with you here. You are the first tier of government. We, the people. There isn't <coughs> anything lower. We start here with you making decisions at the very basic level of government. Your choice tonight is to allow your constituents and the zoning to be run by one person's desire and money. Or you could say, in the interest of the public's decision of zoning and annexation must be made with full information conducted ethically and legally. Now, this council and the public know some of what has gone on behind closed doors. One seemingly small but insignificant piece. Before presenting you with a PowerPoint on the Kohler project, one of your city planners, Mr. Pelishek, allowed Kohler's attorney to strike a city request that Sheboygan as a location would be mentioned in all future advertising. Was Mr. Pelishek acting for the city or for the Kohler company? We have spoken to longtime residents of our town who were brought to tears because they don't understand how this could happen to them. How three people, poised strategically by the Kohler Company, could make a decision for a town they had lived in all their life. 
They are emotional. We have residents planning to sell their homes in Wilson rather than watch the park, be watch the park beaches and lakeshore become unswimmable, like Hika Bay. They are emotional. Mr. Marvin Summers, one condition in selling his land to Kohler for Whistling Straits was that the land he had enjoyed for generations, the view of the lake not be blocked. When an 800 foot long berm was constructed, Mr. Summers said to the DNR, Herb Kohler shook on it with me. Mr. Kohler, Ms. I'm sorry, Mr. Summers was emotional. After hearing from a DNR on April 7th that it should explore other alternatives and complete the wetland application, Kohler pulled its nuclear Excuse annexation. Excuse me, Mary, your time is up. I urge you Excuse to me, vote Mary, your time against is up. zoning and to vote against annexation. Please take the ethical stance. Thank you. Debbie Desmolin is up next, and Matt Four is on deck. Hi, I live at uh, 1704 North 35th Street, uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, with little warning and at 4 p.m., we, fellow ecologists, had a considerable turnout at the City Plan Commission's public hearing on May 30th concerning the annexation to the City of Sheboygan of the Black River Forest currently nestled within the town of Wilson. Now tonight, we are told that the public hearing is to be only about the rezoning of the Black River Forest, that this is not about Kohler's plan to build a golf course where currently a thriving forest exists. The city wants to fragment the issues in spite of the fact that they are all related, just as Kohler's golf course project and annexation will fragment the town of Wilson. We are also told that the vote for both the annexation and the rezoning of the Black River Forest will take place tonight allowing no time for the Common Council to reflect upon or even digest any of the public input or anything else related to these serious issues. A quick decision is a bad decision. If a decision is a good one, it can wait until all of the necessary information has been presented and studied. A wise decision is one that takes everyone into consideration, not just the rich and powerful. A landowner's rights stop where other landowners' rights start. So a rezoning should consider all of the neighbors of the Black River Forest, not just Kohler's current whim. A rezoning needs to be, it needs to consider the repercussions of the proposed use of the property to the larger community. I am sorry, we cannot ignore the elephant in the room, which is the proposed use of the property, a golf course, the very reason for the rezoning. This annexation and rezoning is so that Kohler can bypass necessary responsible oversight to safeguard our water and air and to prevent the outright destruction of a full-fledged forest, sand dunes, Indian mounds, migratory flyway, and a wildlife refuge. Serious citizen objections are only allowed in three-minute sound bites. This hostile annexation is not in collaboration with the town of Wilson. They are ignored. The rezoning is being considered in spite of citizen objection and too soon for widespread information and wise choices to be made. So I beg of you, please delay this vote or just vote no to another misuse of land, another polluting golf course. Vote yes to clean air, potable water, a biodiverse forest, and intact Indian mounds and sand dunes. By the way, why does Kohler get to disturb the sand dunes, whereas at Terriandry Park we are told to stand the boardwalk so as not to disturb these rare formations? Is this yet again another double standard? I also request that Henry Nelson recuse himself for this vote as he had originally planned because he is a Kohler employee and he works at Kohler's Whistling Straits Golf Course. He doesn't dare vote Excuse against Excuse me, your time is up. Thank you. Matt Four is up next and Jean Zabrowski is on deck. Hello, my name is Matt Four, 5523 Short Crest Road, Town of Wilson. I'm also a Town of Wilson firefighter, and I was brought up to discuss the fact that the discussion was made of who could provide better services in regards to the annexation and the rezoning. First of all, the Town of Wilson, this will be very quick, we have 13 full-time firefighters, two engines, water tender, brush truck, and other, by no means, can, can definitely or support this community as far as the golf course is concerned. The Sheboygan City, on the other hand, as recently as May 2017, Sir, could you please keep your comments to the SR5 zoning? 
The part of that is this, in Kohler's documentation and your documentation of the state, you submitted that the services could better be provided by the city of Sheboygan versus the town of Wilson. And that's what I'm addressing. So this, this not Sheboygan press the state zoning. and city leaders continue wrestling with staffing shortages in the Sheboygan Fire Department. You're looking at an independent audit to reduce the number of stations. So I don't know how the city of Sheboygan can be said to do that. Also, the mutual aid box alarm system means that our community has to support yours just like yours has to support mine. If you want to cut me off, just one thing I'm asking. What that means is that I have seven children. I live in the town of Wilson, but if the call comes through, I'll give my life. I'll support your community. I'm asking you to do that same thing for me and support mine by voting no. Thank you. Jane Zabrowski is next, and Eric Thielen is on deck. My name is Jane Zabrowski, and I'm a resident of the town of Wilson and a member of the town's ad hoc committee for their 20-year comprehensive plan. The town's general use map shows the same type of future land uses as the city's land use map for the Kohler land, being park and open space, not residential. This property was never slated to become SR5 zoning until the Kohler proposed annexation was presented. The issue before you here is SR5 zoning, but we all know it's about much more than this. This is about one property owner taking what he wants from the entire town of Wilson and bidding the city to help him do so. The town of Wilson may be smaller than the city, but we have rights also, and we don't agree with SR5 zoning. Town residents are the one who will surround the golf course, and no, we do not want to be annexed to the city or zoned. The city is the wrong local government to do the permit review of the golf course. The proposed annexation and zoning would create a situation where a more distant government makes decisions with potential to create large negative impacts on residents who don't reside in the city. Please consider the rights of Wilson residents who are being forced to annex and suffer this zoning to the city against their wishes. Should they give up their rights for the demands of one person? This is a hostile annexation attempt, manipulated by Kohler in all ways possible to get what they want. It's a sad day for the town of Wilson and for the city if the city decides intergovernmental cooperation and being a good neighbor is not necessary by simply rezoning to SR5. The story then becomes one of how men with one man with power got his way, bought two houses, got control over the future of an entire town. One man destroying 75% of a forest, filling in wetlands, polluting Lake Michigan, stealing away our state park because he says it's util little utilized that area by the public, and rezoning. One powerful man, wouldn't you say? Well, there's all their powerful people that have come from Sheboygan. Todd Gottschall, educated at Harvard, grew a company to over 1,200 employees, died recently at the age of 56. His accomplishments in the Sheboygan press were many, but one statement spoke volumes about the type of man he was. One powerful sentence that said he believed economic innovation did not have to come at the cost of our environment. I ask you to do the right thing. I ask you to believe that economic innovation does not have to come at the cost of our environment. I ask you to let the town of Wilson continue to review this proposed project. I ask you to vote against the proposed zoning. Thank you. Eric Thielen is up next, and Aisley Desmoland is on deck. Eric Thielen, 4933 Evergreen Drive, Town of Wilson. I'm mindful that I'm not your constituent, so I'm particularly grateful you're willing to hear what I have to say. It goes without saying that the Kohler family has done a lot for folks in Chibogan County. It bears mentioning as well that the people in this part of Wisconsin have done a lot for the Kohler company by providing a tremendous workforce, by being good stewards of the natural and economic resources here, and by making this part of Wisconsin an attractive place to live and work. If Sheboygan is a great place to visit and live, that's due in no small part to the fact that neighbors like those in Wilson and Mosul are friendly and welcoming. That said, the Kohler Company typically does a first-class job with their projects, and if they win approval from the relevant agencies and stakeholders, I expect they'll do a first-class job with the golf course as well. That is precisely why it is so hard for me to understand why the Kohler Company has not submitted adequately fleshed out applications to the Army Corps or the DNR. The DNR has made it clear that the changes in the plan must be made now in order to satisfy the basic statutory requirements that any other property owner would have to meet. Among other things, the application isn't specific enough for f informed public comment. But instead of doing the necessary diligence to get those application, those permit applications squared away, the developer has initiated a hostile annexation bid and presumptive zoning request that essentially loads the permitting problem onto your shoulders. 
without giving you the kind of details that you would require of any other property owner. For my part, I'm here because my wife and I love our home in the town of Wilson, and we don't want to see this project go forward unless our elected representatives have an opportunity to weigh in on its collateral effects. That's problematic because the hostile annexation means that those of us who are closest to ground zero have no voice in the zoning question. Equally bad for our Sheboygan neighbors is that you folks will have to devote time and resources to the legal challenges to the annexation, the zoning and permitting. And you'll be working in the dark because until the developer does a better job on those permit applications, the collateral effects cannot be known and there is no basis for informed public comment. Finally, I urge the council to table the zoning matter until the developer has met the same planning and permitting obligations required of every other property owner. There is no downside to waiting for Kohler to do its due diligence. They aren't going anywhere and neither is the property in question. Thanks. Hazelie Desmolin is next and Lee Trotta is on deck. All right, my name is Alize Dimura, and I live at 1704 North 35th Street in the city of Sheboygan. So I want to I want to get to the problem at hand here is that you have an annexation in your zoning ordinance 15-5 that you are elected and sworn in to follow. You have a, a section in there about annexations containing wetland shorelands. And pursuant to section 59.97 of the Wisconsin statutes, any annexations of lands after May 7, 1982, which lie within wetland shorelands as defined herein, shall be governed by the provisions of the Sheboygan County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance until such time that the city adopts an ordinance which is at least as restrictive as the Sheboygan County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. And I can tell you that SR5 zoning is not as restrictive as the Sheboygan County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. And the purpose of this, the purpose of the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, and this would fall under Shoreland Wetland District, is to maintain self, safe and healthful conditions to prevent water pollution, to protect fish spawning grounds and wildlife habitat, to preserve shore cover and natural beauty, and to control building and development in wetlands whenever possible. Development in wetlands should be limited. When development is permitted, it should occur in a manner that minimizes the adverse impacts upon the wetland. Wetlands are seldom suitable as building sites for the following reasons. On-site sewage disposal systems will not function because of high groundwater. Water supplies are often polluted by septic tank wastes that have not been adequately absorbed and purified by the soil. Foundations, roads, and other pavements crack due to poor support capabilities and frost action. Flooding is common in spring and other times of high water. Wetlands provide fish spawning grounds and wildlife habitat and the natural plant and animal communities found in wetlands provide ecological balance to a water course. Wetlands serve as water storage areas and therefore minimize flooding and costly flooding damages. And wetlands biologically treat and purify water and therefore pre prevent water pollution. Now on the Sheboygan County website they have this zoning ordinance, the Sheboygan County Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, and they have a bunch of permitted uses conditional uses, special uses, you name it. And under none of that is there anything about a golf course under any zoning. You are, you were sworn into office to follow the zoning in your own city, the city of Sheboygan. And this is the annexation containing wetland shorelines that is related to your own zoning ordinance 15-5. So I suggest you look over that ordinance and look at the Sheboygan County website, and that should provide you your answer. No golf course can be on that land. Thank you. Lee Trotta is next, and Rose Phillips is on deck. I'm Lee Trotta. I am a resident of the city of Sheboygan and a professional geologist. I had a long career with the United States Geological Survey. Um, annexation of a piece of property assumes they will go with the city water supply. 
normally. I would imagine some of the profits you are anticipating would have to do with selling water. I have used my extensive knowledge of groundwater chemistry and, to, and flow to consult on subjects pertaining to the golf course plans up till now. We, we really need to have the comments come to the issue of the zoning. Is what I just said? I'm sorry, I'll say it again. Uh, annexation, the zoning assumes city water supply. Is that not true? There will be water supply, yes. Okay. Well, it's not part of the zoning. So in other words, the zone has nothing to do with where the water comes from? Correct. Okay. Well, then I guess I don't have to uh, say too much other than the Kohler plans have gone several different directions, and I wouldn't trust that it's going to end up with city water supply. Thank you. Rose Phillips is next. Mayor, I don't think she already spoke at the public forum. Okay. Next is uh, Bell Reagans. And Rebecca Clark is on deck. Okay, then Dave Aldig, he spoke already. Gina Segworth is on deck. Please go ahead. Good evening, and thank you for giving us the chance to share our voice and concerns about this project, this zoning decision. I'm Belle Reagans. I live at 4933 Evergreen in the town of Wilson. I'm a new resident of the town of Wilson. I was struck tonight by a representative of the Kohler who when talking about this zoning decision said he looks forward to developing a positive relationship with the people of the city of Sheboygan. And yet, what have we heard tonight? We've heard abundantly from the people of Wilson and how they feel stepped upon, how they feel discredited, how the Cola Company did an end run around them, how hurt they feel, how disappointed they feel, how disenfranchised they feel. So when you consider entering this zoning decision in this partnership, City of Sheboygan, do you think that Cola is going to treat you any differently? I'm an industrial organizational psychologist, and I can tell you one thing. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Look at the way that Cola has approached this decision. Instead of reaching out with good faith, they've done an end run. They're romancing you now. They're telling you all the positives. But you know that for every positive, there's a negative. You know that something sounds too good to be true. It is. But you don't know the cost yet. They haven't done the analysis. They're holding back that information for the zoning decision, even. So you don't know. But you'll find out. And when the algae blooms, when the lawsuits happen, how do you think color is going to treat you? Do you think they're going to treat you any differently than how they treated the people of the city of, of Wilson, town of Wilson? You have a tiger by the tail. Tigers don't change their stripes. Gina Segworth is next. Nancy Disjardins is on deck. Hi, I'm Gina Segworth. I live at 6430 Cloverleaf Court in the town of Wilson. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I'm not here to speak about the golf course. I imagine you've heard enough about that. I'm here specifically about the proposed annexation of my dad's house. He resides at 1314 Stahl Road. My dad is 83 years old and has difficulty speaking, so he asked me to come on his behalf. When we first heard about the proposed annexation, we considered it and determined that annexation has zero benefit for my dad. His taxes would rise significantly, and the benefits the city provides to its, to its residents either wouldn't apply to him or would not be any improvement. <coughs> he has no need for city water. I have safety concerns regarding emergency services. Will there be confusion regarding who are his first responders? The value of his home may drop. Not too many people want to live in the town of Wilson, pay city taxes, and get no benefits for their tax dollars. We decided he wouldn't sign the petition, and that would be the end of it. Unfortunately, we now understand the controversial process being used and realize that he may have no choice. It can be forced upon him without his consent. 
It is beyond our comprehension that this can happen when he has lived on this land for over 50 years. How can he not have the right to decline this offer? I think the idea that he is losing control is worse than the financial hardship and inconvenience it will create. Proponents of the annexation tell me that his neighbors voted for it. However, his neighbors to the east, west, north, and south are not being annexed because of the crazy selection of properties. I understand some residents, perhaps some renters or some even homeowners, did sign the petition for annexation. Annex them. I don't begrudge them to have the right over their land. However, they should not have the right to dictate my dad's land. I have been told that this controversial process may be legal and that legal requirements may have been met. I would respectfully request you ask yourself a few questions before you vote. Although perhaps legal, is it moral? Is it fair and just to tell an 83-year-old man who has lived in his house for over 50 years, paid his taxes, been a good citizen and neighbor, that he has no say over such a matter? Will you be proud to use him as a pawn to further expedite a large corporation or company's business plan? Does the city of Sheboygan really need to expand itself by forcing residents into it against their will or with hostility? If you have answered no to any of these questions, please vote no to this annexation. Thank you. Nancy Desjardins is uh, next and James Schusler is on deck. It's Nancy Desjardins, 706 Panther Avenue, Town of Wilson Supervisor. It was unbelievable to see the City Plan Commission unanimously approve the annexation motion with absolutely no discussion. The pleas and concerns of over 40 city and town of Wilson residents seem to be endured, ignored, and blown off by the Plan Commission. With this annexation and rezone of the town of Wilson, land to the city of Sheboygan, tied to the Kohler Golf Course, may I point out that there's a tremendous amount of information and research compiled by the town of Wilson over several years. It is relevant and it is authoritative and it has, comes from valuable sources. This material has been made available to you. Just what is your job if it is not to review this type of information on behalf of your trusting constituents to make an appropriate informed decision? The City Plan Commission decision appeared to be a knee-jerk decision based on dollars and increased tax base. Hopefully your decision at the City Council level will reflect, the will reflect the tremendous amount of new information shared with you recently regarding the many troublesome irregularities by Kohler in this process of annexation and rezone and give you some serious pause. I assure you Wilson is very aware of these many troublesome irregularities exposed predominantly through FOIA requests. Unethical practices and misrepresented backdoor negotiations will set you up for failure later in a different venue. Just what is the high pressure rush to this rezoning and, ex and annexation? You have months to consider this, to make an informed decision that you can defend with taxpayers and beyond. Research comes at a high cost, yet the town of Wilson has compiled significant research and made it available to you. Reading it will give you great pause. Ignoring it will haunt you later. The timeline for this proposed annexation and rezone is only a few pressured weeks. The need is for Kohler to push this project through to completion before more of their tactics are uncovered and closer, by closer scrutiny and revealed to you. Does this pressure not sound a loud alarm? Wilson, through its town board, has continued to negotiate in good faith, even hiring cons consultants of Kohler's choice and continuing to approve a liquor license that has been sitting unused for going on four years. Yet it seems impatience and difficulty in complying with a grading plan on wetland and dunes, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers and the DNR permits, have led to Kohler to look for other options. If these permits are not approved, you will have altered a town and hurt its residents for what? Medium density SR5 housing is an inappropriate and damaging use of the land to the ever cited property rights, not the property rights of Mr. Kohler, but those whom you appear to completely ignore, the permitted uses of the town of Wilson residents, their property rights. Thank you and please vote no on this contrived one man personal agenda annexation and rezone. Jim Schusler is up and Scott Matula is on deck. 
Uh, good evening. Uh, I send along uh, respects from D G uh, Dane Chekolinski, our director at Sheboygan County Economic Development. He would love to have been here tonight, but uh, sometime uh, today he became the uh, father of a new son, new resident here in the city of Sheboygan, and uh, his entire family is doing well. Happy to uh, pinch hit in his uh, absence to uh, to endorse uh, the zone, the proper zoning of uh, of this proposed golf golf course. Um, and on behalf of Sheboygan County Economic Development. The zoning uh, certainly provides great opportunity uh, to extend the uh, uh, hospitality cluster that we have in Sheboygan County. The economic study for the proposed golf course reveals the creation of over 200 <coughs> jobs and over $20 million in economic activity. <coughs> when completed, the course will create a million dollars in new tax revenue and lack local tax revenues as well. Um, rezoning will also allow SASD to become the uh, benefactor of another $100,000 per year. And the zoning will also uh, produce a projected 22,000 additional room nights per year uh, locally. That room tax will allow us to continue to market the area and, uh, and grow that, uh, that tourism cluster. Jim, could you um, please get your comments on the zoning? I appreciate it. Um, establishing zoning uh, as a golf course will certainly help the development of golf amenities which have been good for our local economy and the zoning uh, can only help to draw additional revenue to the area. Uh, the Kohlers own the land uh, and the land with a conditional use permit uh, would certainly uh, serve as a golf course. I think we can only look to uh, Whistling Straits up in the town of Mosul which is established and now is a golf course, and look at the kind of impact that that is having to our economy. Um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important to know uh, with Aaron Hills this past weekend, uh, as reported in part six of the news story on the making of Aaron Hills, that uh, the family was actually, the, the Kohlers were actually offered an opportunity to buy Aaron Hills. They committed to continue to develop that golf cluster here. So with proper zoning, uh, this golf course will show that kind of commitment back to them. I think that kind of fidelity is good for Sheboygan County. Um, the last thing that I want to point out is, is that with the development of this golf course, which certainly represents highest and best use for this, uh, for this land, will allow us to continue to develop additional housing. Sheboygan County needs single fa family housing desperately. Our lack of inventory has caused housing sales in Manitowoc County and Ozaki County, and an economic development that's frustrating that we don't get to take advantage of the entire part of growth that comes from the success of our companies. So Sheboygan County Economic Development strongly encourages establishing proper zoning so that we can continue to grow the hospitality portion of our county. Thank you. Scott Matula is up next and uh, Joanne Friedman is on deck. Hi, my name is Scott Matula. My address is 1416 North 5th Street in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'm a city of Sheboygan resident. I'm a city of Sheboygan small business owner and I'm an architect. Uh, with that in mind, I should be for this because maybe it would be a project for me. Maybe it's some sort of development that'll be good, but I can't in any way support this. Um, the best zoning for this land, we do not have that right now. Uh, I was looking at the zoning map in the other room. Maywood Park is a suburban residential area. I don't see us looking at turning that into a golf course. I think there would be an uproar if that happened. Um, the zoning should be some sort of hybrid conservation zone or some sort of planned development that would preserve the national natural effects of this land that would not allow for the development and distraction of rare natural environment. This land should not be developed for home subdivisions or a developed manicured golf course. This land should be developed for the future generations of animals, plants, and humans. Zoning rules were historically enacted to protect neighbors. Zoning is there so we don't have industrial is issues next to housing areas, so that we don't have, uh, we don't put apartment complexes in the middle of parks or put a factory uh, right on the lakeshore beach. Zoning provides protection for homeowners and businesses alike. How could any of our zoning protect our neighbors at the town of Wilson around this site? This isn't 
uh, isn't this similar to Chicago pollution coming up to Wisconsin and having no control over it? I hear a lot of people, elected officials and economic organizations complaining about that because they have no control over it, except now it's the city of Sheboygan polluting the town of Wilson. I don't want to be a citizen that is polluting my neighbor. Thank you. Joanne Friedman is next and Greg Gross is on deck. Okay. I'm Joanne Friedman. I live at W6654 County Trunk Road V in Cascade, Wisconsin. And the reason why I feel that you should vote no and oppose this is because what we have at stake is our dignity, the dignity of the city of Sheboygan, the dignity of the county of Sheboygan, and the dignity of the Kohler family. What we as human beings Joanne, will be leaving you please, behind. You need to bring your comments to the zoning for this parcel. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the zoning for this parcel and the way that it's being done is going to damage the Kohler family. And in addition, damage each and every one of us. And I would like to read for you a little piece of Pope Francis's book where he says we should all protect the environment for human beings to destroy the biologically diversity of God's creation, for human beings to degrade the integrity of the earth and cause damages to its climate by stripping the earth of its natural forests or destroying <coughs> its wetlands, for human beings to contaminate the earth's water, its land, its air, its life. These are sins. For to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin against ourselves and a sin against God. And what he warns about is that our, fam our planet is in desperate need. And he thanks each and every one of us that is trying to protect places that have never been touched by any kind of contamination. That's why this annexation will be detrimental to each and every one of us and especially in the way that it's being handled. Thank you very much. That ends the uh, list of people who signed up to speak tonight. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Dulcie Johnson, you can come forward. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Please come in the on deck chair. Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <clears throat> the Plan Commission document regarding the zoning of the proposed, proposed golf course annexation talks about rezoning land in the town of Wilson. I didn't know that the city could rezone town of Wilson land. And I would submit that perhaps that document and tonight's document are premature. The town has zoned the land in question as P1, Parks and Recreation, A2, Agricultural, A3, Agricultural Transition, and R1, Residential. The City Plan Commission voted to rezone the land, SR5. I went to the planning office this morning to inquire about the SR5 zoning. The go-to guy for zoning questions was not in his office today. So I referenced the zoning ordinance notebook, page 42. And I have all these pages right here. <clears throat> page 42, proceeded to the list of allowable land uses per subchapter 15-2, including land uses permitted as conditional uses, because I had heard that a conditional use permit would be required for said golf course under SR5. Land uses permitted as conditional use include clear cutting, indoor institutional, outdoor institutional, community living arrangement, and bed and breakfast establishments. From there, I referenced outdoor institutional uses, which referred me to section 15.206 sub 3 sub D and read that Active outdoor public recreational land uses include all recreational land uses located on public property and includes 
publicly owned golf courses. I could not find any reference to privately owned golf courses. So I'm confused about how a private golf course could be included in SR5 as a conditional use. And I hope that someone will clarify that during the discussion of document 8.6 or postpone a vote on that document until you really know what you're voting on. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? <laughs> Please proceed. I'm Liz Braden at 131 Timberlake Road, right on, in the town of Wilson. This proposed property is in my backyard, literally, or right on the edge of it. I've been listening to all the comments today, and I am talking about the zoning, because it's become I'm increasingly aware. I was wondering, why is it suburban residential five? It's parkland in town of Wilson. That's what the zoning is. And there's conditional use permit for that, which is very different. Suburban residential five means if the golf course doesn't go through, we could end up with a huge subdivision with small lots. I didn't move up here 14 years ago for that. I moved up here because I fell in love with the area. It's like being in the North Woods. You go into the town of Wilson, into the Black River area, it's like a different world. You're in the North Woods, and it's only an hour north of Milwaukee. All those Chicago people are heading, zooming past on the freeway to Dark County. They could just be coming to Sheboygan County, and they would have that beautiful Northwoods feeling. So I really urge you to reconsider this zoning. It makes no sense, and I don't see how we can separate the annexation from the zoning because they are interconnected. So I urge you to vote against that, too. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Chad, could you check the back room? Okay, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on then to the consent agenda. That will include items 3.2 through 3.23. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. The consent agenda is before you. Are there any uh, just questions on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Duran? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Nice. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items uh, 4.1 through 4.8 <laughs> will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 will lie over. Items 5.2 and 5.3 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 6.1 is RC number 40 of 1718 by the Lawn Licensing Committee and RO number 33 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting licensed applications. It recommends that taxi cab driver's license applications 1657 George D. Welch be denied based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his history as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Other person holds you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Under discussion? Yes, I'm wondering if George Welch is here. Um, our committee has voted to deny his license due to the lack of ability to cooperate with our committee, as well as several 
felonies that have a direct influence on a taxi cab driver's license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Duran? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 49 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 26 of 1718 by all the person Donahue and Boren to authorize a loan from the trust funds from the state of Wisconsin in the sum of $400,000 for tax incremental district number 16 housing project and to repeal resolution 13 of 1718 dated May 1st of 2017 and recommends that the resolution be passed. All the person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Duran? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 50 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 27 of 1718 by Alder Person Born, urging that the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan urge the Governor and the Legislature to protect homeowners and Main Street businesses from having more of the property tax burden shifted to them by passing legislation and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alder Person Born. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Alderperson Drawn? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 56 of 1718 by the Public Safety Committee to whom is referred resolution number 34 of 1718 by all the person drawn, authorizing entering into a contract for the purchases of one new fire engine for the City of Sheboygan Fire Department and recommends passing the resolution. All the person drawn. Make a motion, put the resolution on passage. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. And we have a second. That's for us for discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? I'm sorry, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion to refer to this to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, we are discussing several issues related to the Fire Department at the Committee of the Whole. This is a $500,000 expenditure. I think it would be uh, nice to have this vetted and uh, discussed in greater detail at the Committee of the Whole when we discuss other issues regarding the Fire Department. Is there a second? Second. Okay, under discussion on the amendment, uh, I'd like to call up Mike Romas to see if uh, this is going to create any other issues. I understand your reason for doing it, though. This is a 2016 capital approved item already, and we're making plans already to have this uh, engine in place, so I'd be totally against that. That's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, is Thank there you. any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, sir. I don't know how my button is working. Um, and that was the point I was going to make, is that this has already been approved. It's been vetted by the Capital Improvements Commission, the City Plan Commission, and was part of the overall budget for 2016. So this is just merely an implementation of that expenditure. And I don't think we can go back and relitigate what we approved for 2016. I think all the discussion that we had at that time did reflect it is a huge investment. There's no doubt about it. 
that it is a needed piece of equipment and we really should not be delaying. Alderperson Sorensen? Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, echo what uh, Alderperson Donahue said. And Chief, uh, you also said in committee two that uh, the engine that we're replacing is already over so many years that they get replaced after I believe it was 23 years and this one's 20. 25 years, this one's at 27 going on 28. Yeah. And there's also an eight month lead time so we need to get in production schedule or else we won't get it for over, it'll be in maybe 19. And I'd just like to add one thing, we approved this in committee and the committee approved it unanimously. I yield. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of ref uh, referring, I mean, uh, this back to committee, uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 I think we need, a, we need a roll call. Nay. Okay, that Please. was Alderperson Drawn. Yeah, it was a nay. Uh, Alderperson Ross? Name. And then the rest of you, if you'd please enter it into your, your voting. Okay. Alderperson, Alderperson Duran, what did you say? Nay. Nay. And Alderperson Ross, what did you say? It was a nay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the question on the okay, so we're back to discussing the, uh, the motion before us. I'm sorry? Question on on the screen here is not the amendment. If there's no amendment. The motion that you're voting on right now is to refer this to the Committee of the Whole. An I vote would be to refer, a nay vote would be not to refer. But that's not what uh, it says. On the screen it says recommend passing the resolution. Okay, well, what I have here and what all the votes are is to refer. Thank you. Rosemary? Okay, I'm confused. I thought we we just did a vote on referring it. And we're, voting. we're doing an we're doing a roll call because it wasn't unanimous. There was dissension, so we have to record who dissented. Okay, so this is so this would be referring it to the committee of the whole. An I vote would be to refer it. A nay vote would be not to refer it. Okay. Point of order, that is not the motion that is on the screen that we'll be voting on. The motion on the screen is, is actually, what does it say up here? Adopting and passing the resolution. Well, it says it on my screen and on, the, on here. So the clerk will make sure this is recorded on the referral request and then we'll go on to the next motion. I'm, I'm going to go back to the main one next. Do you have what you need? Nope. What do you need to do to make it? I'm waiting on one bolt. Okay. <clears throat> Who's? Thank you. Two nays and four, I'm sorry, two ayes and 14 nays to refer to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, now we're back to the motion to approve the uh, accept, adopt, and then pass the, this resolution. Is there any further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the resolution? Alderperson Drawn? Alderperson Ross? Aye. Two eyes. Aye. Got it. <clears throat> Fifteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item five, six point five will be referred to the committee of the whole. Uh, then we'll move on to matters laid over. Item 7.1 is General Ordinance Number 5 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue, Boren, Wolf, Ryan, Fleisch, Ross, amending Section 82-33 of the Sheboygan County, I mean, the Sheboygan Municipal Code as to amend the positions in the Department of Public Works, Wastewater Treatment Division, and the Engineering Division in the Department of Public Works Organization. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 
Alderperson Dryan? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to item, item documents pertaining to the zoning and annexation. 8.1 is a report of officers uh, number 58 uh, of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Dave and Jean uh, Gruber stating their concerns regarding the proposed Kohler Company annexation to the city. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Uh, next item is 8.2, is RO number 60 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from attorney Westerberg of Pines Beach LLP regarding the Kohler Company's annexation position, uh, petition, the proposed zoning map amendment, and the pre-annexation and development agreement. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion passes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I heard something. Heard me. I'm sorry. You voted against. Who did I? Okay, let's take a roll call vote. Okay, this is to file the communication. Alderperson Drawn. Alderperson Drawn to file the communication. Oh, sorry, I didn't say aye. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Alderperson Ross. Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Lewandowski. Sorry. I'm waiting for Alderman Lewandowski. Thank you. Fifteen ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 8.3 is RO number 59 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration regarding the Kohler Company annexation stating that the proposed annexation has been reviewed and found to be in the public interest. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Trester. My question is, when they say that this has been found to be in the public interest, I'd like to know what public uh, were interviewed or um, heard that they could make such a statement. I'd like to turn that over to the city attorney. The Department of Administration in making the determination of whether something is in the public interest follows the uh, standards in the state statute and makes a determin de determination based on that. They're not taking a poll of any particular people, whether it's in the city or the town. Instead, they're applying uh, the law. Thank you very much. Alderperson Lewandowski. I saw on the Facebook page for Friends of the Black River Forest they uh, submitted a document that they got through public records and on there it said that they were did not feel that it was in the best interest of the citizens of Sheboygan and I have the first page of what they included on there and it said please consider that the review of this annexation petition becomes simple when this fact is considered the proposed core annexation is likely the largest gerrymandered balloon on a string annexation submitted to the municipal boundary review in decades. I received thousands of annexations over six and one half years and never saw a more erigosely gerrymandered balloon on a string annexation. These types of annexations are very seldom submitted to MBR for review because most petitioners and cities understand that an annexation with this shape and characteristics 
is against the public interest. The city of Sheboygan and Kohler apparently believe that they can make up the, their own rules. This is a moment of truth for municipal boundary review. If MBR cannot muster the courage to find against this annexation, then MBR's annexation review function is broken and it might as well stop reviewing annexations. So they said that it was against the public interest. Thank you for that. Uh, is that ask the city attorney to address the balloon on a string uh, contention? Well, at this point, I'm not going to comment on that because it's uh, not neither my comment on that nor anything Alderman Lewandowski just said is germane to the motion before you. Okay, thank you. We'll move on then. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion to accept and file? All the person holds you. Yes. I have a question you can tell me if I appropriately am asking it at the right you, point. You need your mic. I have a question and I'm not certain that this is the appropriate time to ask it, but this document is saying that the Wisconsin Department of Administration found the annexation to be in the best of public interest and what Alderman Lewandowski just brought forward says it's not. My question is, which is it? Those people are not working for the Department of Administration, as I understand at this time. The people that wrote Lewandowski? Correct. Some of them may have worked for the department in the past. But it wasn't from that office, are no. you saying? No, it's not. Okay, thank you. That brings clarity. Thank you. Alder Person Warren. Thank you, Mayor. I had that same question this morning. I, uh, Alderman Lewandowski had sent that out, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't download the document. So I called Alderman Lewandowski and asked him the date of that document. And the date on that document, whether they're employees or not, precedes what I consider to be the official from the Department of Administration. And I believe that was on June 5th. I don't have it right in front of me here. But that, the, the document that we actually got from the Department of Administration, the official document was after that document that uh, Alderman Lewandowski was referencing. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Trester. Uh, I spoke to the Department of the Administration today. I brought a call in to them because I was a little confused as to it being in the best interest of the public. And when I posed the question, they could not answer as quickly as the city attorney did because they, the woman I spoke to who was the assistant to the man who sent the letter out, uh, Eric, whatever his last name is, um, she didn't know why it was in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan, um, or in the, the best interest of the public, I guess is the word they used. I'm not convinced that this is in the best interest of the public, and I'm not so sure that I like the idea that a, an organization that is in Madison that does not have feedback from people who are considered the public have the right to make that determination. Okay. So you have some direction for the council on this line of uh, right. discussion? All, right now all we're doing is accepting and filing the document. The proper time for the discussion on whether you agree or not with the Department of Administration's uh, decision would be at the uh, point that we're discussing the actual annexation. Right now all you're voting for is whether to file or not. Um, so you should, your comments should be limited as to whether the document should be filed or not filed. Okay, so we're back to the motion to file. Um, all those in favor of filing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Alderperson Drawn? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Fifteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. 8.4 is RC number 51 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 28 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the pre-annexation and development agreement and recommends that the, they pass the resolution along with the attached updated agreement. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. 
For the purposes only of uh, placing the matter on the floor, I move that the uh, resolution be uh, accepted, adopted, and passed. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Lewandowski. I just got something that I would want to read. There is an old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. This proposed annexation of land and Kohler's golf course seems to be too good to be true. Kohler told us about all the tax money Sheboygan would get. Where did these tax free dollar figures come from? Can we actually believe anything Kohler Company tells us? A couple of weeks ago at the Planning Commission meeting, where the Planning Commission voted on it, a representative from Kohler Company said there would be no runoff or pollution getting to Lake Michigan. Nowhere else on this planet is that true. So how can Kohler Company say that there won't be any here? We received figures from the fire department, fire chief, head of human resources, and the fire department union, all working for the city of Sheboygan. Yet some older persons do not believe our city employees and want a study done. How come no one is asking for a study of where Kohler Company came up with their numbers? Chad Pelichek told us in closed session, I know what was said in closed session is private, but since it was posted on Facebook last week, it is no longer private. Chad said a developer would pay for putting all in all water and sewer lines for the annexed line, land. But Kohler Company lawyers have crossed that out according to a post last week on the Facebook page from Friends of the Black River Forest. And their lawyer and documents obtained from the city of Sheboygan under the Freedom of Information Act also crossed out by Polar Company lawyers was the part that said the golf course was located in Sheboygan. Do we really want Polar in Sheboygan if they are not going to acknowledge being part of our city or to promote Sheboygan? They have never promoted Sheboygan in the past. Why should we expect them to do so now? For the first golf tournament at Whistling Straits, Kohler directed traffic away from Sheboygan. The exact words posted on their Facebook page, and I quote, Kohler strikes Sheboygan as location of proposed course in all advertising. Chad Belichick, Sheboygan City Planning, prepared a PowerPoint for the City Council closed session on April 24th. He stated, the water utility shall extend water service to the golf course property at the developer's expense. Developer to identify the golf course as being in Sheboygan on future televised events. Those two items were immediately deleted by Debbie Tomsky, Kohler attorney, and the council never saw them. They speak for themselves as to why Kohler wanted them removed from the presentation. So if Kohler and the developer are not paying for the water, and sewer line, that would leave the city of Sheboygan and its taxpayers who would rather see any available city money spent on street repair, not on a billionaire's golf course. A few weeks ago, Alderman Bellinger was quoted in the Sheboygan press as saying the city is spending and borrowing too much money. So now we should spend and borrow more money for a billionaire's golf course. A billionaire who has a wallet as big as his ego and uses that wallet to buy or get what he wants, either by buying or waving big wads of cash in front of people. In the town of Wilson, Polar Company needed three property owners or people living on those properties to get enough signatures to apply to have the town of Wilson land annexed into the city of Sheboygan. So what did Polar Company do? They bought these properties in the town of Wilson and are now leasing them out to get the needed signatures. Legal, yes, but right, no. By doing it this way, Kohler is forcing his way on the other people in the town of Wilson that do not want to be annexed into the city of Sheboygan. Some people also say it's Kohler's property, let him do what he wants with it. But in order to do what he wants with it, he needs Wisconsin State Parkland that doesn't belong to him. Kohler Company getting his parkland for their private use would set a dangerous precedent for other parks in the future. Kohler and his huge ego want to make Kohler, not Sheboygan, a destination for golfers. The question of Indian artifacts on this land has also come up. <coughs> Kohler says that the Indian tribes are okay with this project. Are they really? Have we heard that directly from the leaders of the various tribes? And do we have it in writing? In the 1800s, the U.S. government would announce to the Indians at a certain time and place there would be a 
they, they would be there to sign a treaty. Most of the time, the Indian tribes and chiefs would be against the treaty and would avoid the area. A few Indians would show up to see what gifts they could get from the government. The government would then declare that these Indians were chiefs and represented their tribes and have them put their mark on a treaty. How do we know a Kohler can't be doing the same thing? I also had quite a few questions and asked various city people these questions. And I got of answers of, that's a good question, but I don't know. I asked Council President Wolf when he called me. Next year we are scheduled to go down to 10 older persons but we will have the same districts as the county. Will we still be, have the same districts as the county if we annex this land? I asked the fire chief, since the town of Wilson and Black River area is heavily forested, would we be able to fight a fire in that area with the equipment we have? The chief said, we are an urban type fire department and we would need to call in other departments with their equipment, but we could handle being in charge of fighting the fire. I asked the DPW how many ash trees there are in the proposed annex area and how many of the city would be responsible for taking down. Again, the answer I got was, I don't know, but it's a lot. Other questions I have but didn't ask, well, we need to hire more police officers to patrol this much larger area of the city or police department is stretched thin now. Would we need to add bus service to that area and how would that affect the current half hour bus schedule at the transfer point? What happens to the development if Kohler doesn't get the needed permits from the DNR? Will the city of Sheboygan still get the tax money and hotel tax Kohler has promised? If the town of Wilson sues us, who pays for the attorney fees? To me, there are just too many unanswered questions for me to vote in favor of this. With all the un unanswered questions I have, and I had more questions before I spoke with the mayor today, and he answered some of my questions, and I thank Mayor Vandersteen for taking the time to speak to me and answer some of my questions. I am in favor of annexing the land, but not for another golf course. I have lived in Sheboygan my entire life, and have learned never to trust Kohler Company. So I still ask my fellow older persons, please vote against the annexation, like I will be doing, because it sounds too good to be true for Sheboygan. But if this annexation passes, I hope I'm proved wrong. But I heard the same thing before, how something was going to benefit Sheboygan. Two that come to mind are Plaza 8 and Spaceport Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, being a member of the Finance Committee, I uh, read the pre-annexation <laughs> agreement uh, before the meeting last Monday, and then I got to the meeting, and then we got a revised copy. And one thing in particular disturbed me in, in the changes, and that's on page seven, uh, item double I. And that is, it reads as follows, the city agrees that it shall not directly charge developer for the cost of, of, to design and extend that portion of the new water main from its current terminus at Riverdale Drive to Stall Road. Developer, developer agrees that it shall reimburse the equivalent third-party cost of extending an eight-inch water main south of Stall Road to uh, Beach Park Road. Then I asked the question of, with the city being responsible for the Riverdale, uh, Riverdale Drive portion down to Stall Road, how much that's going to cost the city? And I was told it's going to be $500,000. And uh, Alder Person Donahue made a motion, uh, which I seconded, to reinstate the language that Kohler Company, if I, if, I under, if I remember correctly, that Kohler Company would be responsible for the area of Riverdale Drive down to Stall Road. The vote with four members present was two for that uh, motion to reinstate, reinstate that, that the developer would pay that entire cost and two against. So, what I would like to make a motion tonight uh, is to reinstate the original language and it could read, uh, it could read, city agrees that it shall charge developer for the cost to design and extend that portion of the new water main from its current terminus at Riverdale Drive to Stall Road. 
City Attorney. Probably should wait for a second, then I'll comment. I'll second that. Okay, we have a second on a request. Your, your motion is fine. I would suggest somewhat different wording, though, because um, just simply dropping the not doesn't really, I think you, you need to have it parallel. It, that the pr Really, the proper language that I would suggest is you eliminate the uh, first sentence of two uh, and you change um, stall road in the second sentence uh, to Riverdale Drive. And that w that would keep everything parallel. Then that would probably be the better way to handle that. I'm not saying you should vote for or against that, but if you're if you're going to make that motion, I think that language is preferable. That that's fine with me. If that's more appropriate, I hope it's okay with my second. It is. Okay, so we have an, an amendment to the motion on the floor. I need to have that repeated by city attorney. So it would be to eliminate the first sentence of subsection 4C2 on page 7 and then to amend uh, the second sentence, which now becomes the first sentence, so that uh, instead of Stall Road, it reads Riverdale Drive. So in other words, it would be starting at Riverdale Drive and it would be going all the way down to Beach Park Road. Right. Is that correct? Correct. And, and you know, it should also include um, Riverdale Drive to Beach Park Road in the fourth sentence as well, which deals with uh, um, connection fees. No. Fourth section as well to include what? So the, the fourth sentence would also replace the word stall road and replace it with uh, Riverdale Drive. Okay, we have a, an amendment that was made. Uh, is there any discussion on the amendment? All the person, Donahue? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, actually, uh, Alder Boren kind of beat me to the punch here. I actually have four fairly significant issues that I would like to have amended in the agreement. Um, and just as a preface to the proper way that we should go about this, I just want to say that we are going mighty fast on this. The petition, annexation petition is filed on May 15th, and the statute allows uh, up to 120 days for the, the uh, body to make a decision. We're doing it in five weeks, and the annexation, the pre-annexation agreement, which was negotiated between the Kohler company and staff, and there's really nothing unusual about that, um, but it came to the finance committee just last week. We spent about an hour on it, and there was another meeting, and there really wasn't time to fully explore the other issues that I have with the, with the, uh, with the agreement. Um, I completely support um, Alder Boren's uh, amendment. If the city is responsible for installing the water lines down to Stall Road, that is about a $500,000 price tag. What the city gets out of the additional property taxes that Kohler is going to be paying is $87,000, $89,000 a year. So it will be more than five years before the city has any financial benefit from this annexation. Uh, in terms of property taxes. So, you know, that is, that is a significant concern, and I'm just not sure why we gave up the original language, which had the developer putting in the water line with the provision that if the city is connecting additional people into that water line, we'll pay the developer for those costs, and that would be fair. Um, the, the Kohler Company is asking for a huge concession, in my opinion, in terms of annexing this property, and we at least should not be, as Hamilton would say, you know, throwing away our shot on this. So, um, not apropos to the, this particular amendment, I have great concerns about the cap on attorney fees. I think there is some need to restructure the language. With Could we keep that for those other items? Well, and let me just finish with respect to um, the city cooperating with the company in terms of obtaining um, access or obtaining various permits. And then I really do think we need to talk about public access beyond just the public trust doctrine for people being able to walk along the lake. My view, 
and I don't know how Alder Boren would feel about this, is that this matter just be re-referred to the Finance Committee so that we could spend a little bit more time thinking about and examining this lengthy and very important agreement. I mean, we're basing a lot of our enthusiasm about this on all the money we're going to get. Well, I don't think we're going to get that much money, at least for a while. And so I think we ought to talk about it in more detail. I don't know if Alder Bourne would be willing to, to withdraw his amendment with the idea that if my amendment to re-refer to, to finance fails, he could reinstate his and we can just keep going through this. Thank you for those comments. Is there any more comments on the amendment? Alderman Donahue, is that a motion to... You can't make a motion because yeah. we have an amendment on the floor. I it's need not Alder Warren to agree to withdraw his motion for the time being. I'm not ready to do that at this time. I think uh, any discussion that we have on my concern and also Alderperson Donahue with all the people here from the town of Wilson, I think they should hear the discussion tonight. Uh, they're here, and uh, it's very difficult for some of the people that are here tonight from the town of Wilson to probably make a 4 o'clock meeting on a Monday night. So I would just as soon uh, vote on our concerns on this document tonight. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Alderperson Trester. If we're not going to refer this back to finance, then I am not going to support it. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderperson Boren. Oh, I just want to reiterate that I just think, you know, when I, when I read the document before I go to the Finance Committee and it's approved, our Kohler Company agrees to pay for that entire water line from Riverdale all the way down to, South, to, to Beach Park Road, and all of a sudden I get the finance and the language has changed and I find out it's going to cost the taxpayers uh, $500,000, I guess... I value the city's tax dollars, and I, and I don't want to be paying the $500,000. And how we ultimately vote on this annexation tonight, I think this might be something that we all could agree on, that the city should not be paying $500,000 for this water line. So I would encourage you to support the amendment and have Kohler Company pay for the entire water line. Thank you. I'd like uh, uh, Administrator Hofflin to talk a little bit about why there was a division at Stall Road and why we're treating that uh, differently when we negotiated the agreement. As part of the water utilities uh, infrastructure plan, uh, as part of that planning effort, they identify where the major backbone water mains are, are installed. And typically those are along arterial streets in the community with uh, 12th Street uh, being one of those. So as, as the city continues to grow along the southern edge of our existing community, uh, this, again, this probably would be installed not as a 8-inch, a 12-inch, but probably a 16-inch water main. Again, uh, with the expectation that ultimately it would be a loop system heading west to uh, South Business Drive, eventually, again, a planning process. So the section between Riverdale uh, and Stall Road, again, is part of that uh, backbone infrastructure plan that is part of a, a master plan for the water system. And that was the, the philosophy, I guess, that was used uh, as part of the uh, discussion between Kohler company representatives and city staff to amend the uh, annexation development agreement uh, pr just prior to that finance and personnel committee. Uh, as, as the document identifies, should there be annexations between Riverdale and Stall Road along 12th Street, uh, similar to the provision in the pre-annexation agreement that recognizes uh, the section that Kohler Company is financially responsible for? Should there be any annexations along this stretch? Uh, that would be a reimbursement of any city expense, uh, which would ultimately defray or reduce the city's, uh, city's cost. Uh, any difference in water main Pipe cost between 8 inch, 12 inch, or, or 16 inch, uh, that would be borne by the water utility because, again, it's part of this major uh, backbone water main uh, extension uh, plan. And that would support the uh, new proposed uh, lands for uh, annexation with the uh, industrial park. Uh, as many of you probably have read, the uh, city's, city utilities in the process of uh, locating, designing, and planning to construct as early as uh, 2018 uh, a new water tower 
uh, in an area south of the uh, Sheboygan Business Center. Uh, eventually, the section uh, of, of the water line uh, heading west on Stall Road uh, would ultimately connect with that uh, uh, elevated water storage tank. Thank you. Alderperson Donahue? Um, and I, I appreciate that. Um, I just think we're doing the Kohler Company a huge favor and there's no reason to give away $500,000, which really <coughs> doesn't bring us any financial benefit just in terms of property taxes for more than five years. Um, I understand that there are other economic benefits. I'm not as rosy about all those benefits as the uh, presenters from SCDC and the Kohler Company. Nonetheless, I think there would be some, some economic benefit. But here's my question. It's a procedural one. If we vote on this amendment and it passes, the pre-annexation agreement then is amended. Is the annexation petition then, which is predicated on the pre-annexation agreement being agreeable to all or agreeable to a majority, does that continue on or where does that leave us? That's why I think it ought to go back to finance. The annexation petition is not conditioned on the uh, pre-annexation agreement. Okay. So it is possible to annex property without a pre-annexation agreement and it, that could happen today as well. Okay. So in other words, in terms of the annexation, we really don't have any control over the use of that land except as it would be uh, delineated in uh, SR5. The Kohler Company could decide to take down the forest and, and, and put in posh homes. Well, you also would have to uh, pass the zoning, which is a third separate item. So right. simply, I think we have to think of each of these three items separately. Uh, the annexation is simply, do we add you know, property uh, from the town of Wilson to the city of Sheboygan? The pre-annexation agreement governs you know, uh, sort of the agreements between the city and the Kohler Company uh, on how will deal with some of the issues that arise as a result of the annexation uh, and the zoning obviously deals with the, the, the zoning issue and they're not necessarily uh, they don't necessarily have to rely on each other you could pass uh, you couldn't pass zoning without annexing first but beyond that you can have one without the other well I, I just I just wonder if there are substantive changes to the pre-annexation agreement, whether we should go ahead with the annexation tonight. But uh, in the meantime, if Alder uh, Bourne is not willing to withdraw his motion, I, I will support uh, the amendment. I think it's real important we not give up on this. Uh, I understand the looping, uh, water system looping, that's very good for the city. And it's just in the negotiations that we have with a powerful landowner and we are a powerful city and we ought to make sure that we don't give up our, our uh, uh, our uh, ability to make sure that this is actually a financially viable piece for us. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen. Kind of going back to the water utility and the water connection, if the city is uh, ending up having to pay for, for the connection, um, and this is a question for the city administrator or for the mayor, um, so will we have to ad uh, borrow additional funds for that or is that currently budgeted aside for the future for the water connection? Um, I'm not sure about that. Could you answer? Really, the Common Council has, has a, a couple different options. One could be borrowed funds uh, to maybe coincide with uh, ex, uh, eventual revenue associated with the additional tax base so that you mirror the, the debt service with the future uh, property taxes uh, that would be received on the project. Uh, the city does have roughly 51%, 56% of its uh, annual operating expense uh, in a reserve account in the general fund. So there would be sufficient funds, excess uh, fund balance in the general fund to pay for expenditure like this. So the city does have options. Any follow up? No, nope, not at this moment. Okay, all the person, I, oh, go ahead. Okay, try it again. Yes, the city has funds in our fund balance to pay for this capital expense, but, or the city could uh, is, issue debt. So at this current moment, there's no plan moving forward with, with this agreement moving forward right now for discussing water main hookup at the city. Uh, the source of the revenue associated with this project, which could be in a couple years, uh, has not been discussed at any committee. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Um, city Administrator, could you please let the council know what the 56% equals in dollars in reserves, what that number is? 
Um, I don't know if our finance director is here uh, tonight. Uh, my recollection is, is it 10 million? Probably 10 million in, uh, in, in fund balance in the general fund. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll on the amendment. Do you all know what the amendment is, basically? Yes? Okay. Alder person drawn? He may. Alder, may. Alder person Ross? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> 13 eyes, oh, excuse me. 13 eyes, three no's. Motion passes. The amendment passes. So the um, uh, resolution is before us as amended. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would like to amend uh, Section 5 sub E of the agreement, which provides a cap of $125,000 uh, that the Kohler Company will reimburse the city for with respect to legal fees uh, and uh, to uh, to eliminate the cap and, and ask for full payment from the Kohler Company. Second. Okay, we have a, an amendment that was made on the uh, legal fee cap. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Alderperson Sorensen. So in, in the, for this uh, amount, it's, it's $125,000. Uh, can either committee members or the city attorney kind of discuss how that number uh, came to be? City Attorney, could you explain um, the research you've done on uh, possible litigation? Well, I mean, it was a negotiated number, uh, quite frankly. Um, some of the, some of the um, discussion related, first of all, um, regarding what the city's <laughs> deductible might be uh, under our uh, insurance, uh, which is $125,000. Um, However, I wanted to make clear that depending on how the litigation occurs, most likely this would not be covered by our insurance um, just because of the nature of the claim would not be for damages. Um, now, if, if there were a claim for damages, then it would be uh, covered by our insurance. We also took a look at the nature of the litigation in this case. and. While all litigation is expensive, and I absolutely cannot guarantee you that it would be less than $125,000, um, in, uh, in sort of negotiating a, a cap, uh, $125,000 seemed uh, at least reasonable to both sides uh, in setting an amount. Um, a couple things to keep in mind. The pre-annexation agreement uh, really relates specifically to this annexation. <coughs> Should there be, in, in the unlikely event that uh, a court uh, would find this annexation to be uh, not legal uh, and the city would have to start over, uh, really the Kohler would have to start over, yeah, that would be the end of, of this agreement, that would be the end of this annexation and any agreement would, you know, would, would start over and we would be able to negotiate additional funds. So given sort of the nature of the, the litigation, again, I can't guarantee you in any way that uh, it wouldn't cost the city anything, if, if, that fees would only go up to 125,000, uh, but this, this is a different, different type of beast than certain other types of litigation. For example, you know, the, the litigation regarding, uh, uh, you know, the, the Union Avenue tap or some of the other uh, litigation that we're involved with, uh, with the city. Um, Alderperson Donahue. 
Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to speak to uh, my reasoning. Um, this is a handy little chart about our annexation over the years and how the city has grown, and it's historically very interesting. It's particularly interesting if you start going into the 1980s and all many of the little red um, uh, uh, lines talk about a circuit court decision, um, uh, various other decisions that were uh, litigated. The town of Sheboygan had a long history of litigation with the city uh, with respect to annexations. Um, in other words, annexations do get litigated. And uh, before the Department of Administration letter, um, I would have thought that the, uh, respectfully, but I thought that the uh, town of Wilson chances were slim to none. Uh, based on, on prior case law. But when the Department of Administration says, I think this annexation, this balloon on a string, falls somewhere in between the first Mount Pleasant case and the second Mount Pleasant case, which kind of stirred up how you, how you analyze these uh, annexations on a string, um, that gave me a lot of thought. Um, and I, my sense is that there will likely be some litigation here. Respectfully, Attorney Adams, $125,000 doesn't get you very far these days. It's not only the attorney fees, but it's the expert witness fees uh, and litigation. Uh, I, can almost, I can't imagine litigation of this complexity going for less than $125,000. I just think if we get into this, because we are extending this terrific benefit to the Kohler company, that if it's litigated, They should pay because we're doing it on their behalf. And so I think, um, <clears throat> I think originally there wasn't a cap on the attorney fees, right, Chuck? Right. The document that you had in, in front of you at finance and personnel, which of course had not been uh, agreed to by either side, but we had to get the document uh, to you, did not have a cap. That yeah. is correct. So I think that we should just take this back and say no cap on attorney fees. Other discussion, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if I remember correctly from uh, the Finance Committee meeting, Attorney Adams, that we're going to be hiring outside counsel for this? We would likely hire outside counsel for this. Okay, yes. so. I mean, that's up to you in the end, but. Right, well. That would be my recommendation. Okay, and then also with this type of litigation, is it possible, I think I answered, asked this question at Finance, but I can't remember your answer. Would it be possible on this type of litigation that the judge could order that we pay the town of Wilson's uh, legal fees should the ruling come in against us? It depends on the nature of the lawsuit the town would file against the city. However, if it is the typical type that where a court could allow those fees, it is much more likely then to fall under our insurance. Okay, and I, I remember with some history on the council, uh, 11 years going on, 12 years on the council, with some issues that we've had in the past where the city has come up on the short end of the stick with legal fees, and I'm, I'm trying to reference certain issues, but I think it may have had something to do with the Blue Harbor development or something down in the riverfront. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm along with Alder Person Donahue, uh, am uh, uh, very concerned that $125,000 is, is going to be enough. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I'm, just, I'm just concerned that uh, we're going through this and we're nitpicking this agreement and there was a mutual agreement between the city and Kohler and the people that are charged with bringing this type of thing together before us. And I can see some minor things, but uh, right now we've, we've, we've put them on the hook for $500,000 probably for for the, uh, the water line that's going to be building the backbone of the infrastructure that we're going to want to move further south, you know, we're going to put that all on them. And now we're going to have, a, 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 you know, a take, remove a cap on legal fees and say, you know what, whatever it's going to be, you know what, we're not going to share in any responsibility with it. We're just going to go and, and, and do this. And, you know, I've got some concerns that, you know, by, you know, doing all this stuff and, and uh, putting this all in 100% our favor and sure we want to do all this and, and you know have you know you know the big ugly corporation pay for everything and you know and, and you know because you know we they've got you know they you know they've got we've got something that they want and they want our votes um, you know I, I think we might be 
um, you know, before we even get to vote on the annexation, have killed the deal. And I guess I would like to refer to City Administrator Hofflin and say, you know, you had your negotiations with Kohler Company, and uh, do you think that this, these, what we're talking about, would be amicable with them, and they would move forward, or would they tell us to pound sand and walk away from it? Administrator Hofflin. Uh, as you can imagine, there's been uh, a series of negotiations, uh, both with uh, Mr. Cassidy and uh, other uh, internal. Uh, legal counsel and, and contracted legal counsel. Uh, as as uh, City Attorney Adams identified, uh, most of the provisions of this document were uh, addressed by city staff uh, in consultation with uh, council leadership. Uh, some of the changes, uh, again, that we discussed tonight were made uh, within uh, two days of the last uh, finance and, and uh, personnel committee. So. Some of the details uh, were still up in the air prior to that meeting. Uh, representatives of Kohler Company did uh, identify concerns specifically on the capping, the, coming up with a cap for the legal. Uh, they identified that potentially there is some additional room should the 125,000 not be of the council's liking. Uh, but they did identify their uh, strong desire that in fact the, the agreement have some type of a, a financial cap. Uh, you've already addressed the issue of the water main extension. Uh, uh, big picture, I, I don't know if the, cha if the change in the water main and potentially a change in the uh, legal cap is, is a deal breaker. Uh, it's really unknown. I know that uh, ultimately every project has a bottom line and whether this uh, no longer meets their bottom line as far as a return on their investment, uh, they will have to make that decision. I, I, I would add, though, that is it a deal breaker as far as the annexation happening? The answer to that is no, because once they've made the application for the annexation, it is now in your hands. So even if we don't ever get to an agreement with Kohler, it may, be, may not be useful to have no agreement with them, but you can still annex without an agreement with Kohler. And, and then we would have to work things out later. Thank you for those comments. Alder, person, truster. I guess I feel that as long as Kohler is the one that came to us and we didn't go to them, at least that is what we're being told, um, we need to protect ourselves. And I think Alderman Donahue has a good point, and I would support Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Alder, person, Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, I agree with uh, Alderman Bellinger on the points that I think that we're taking this a little bit out of context. If we were to look at this opportunity by anybody else and not look at the, the, the owner's name, we would be looking at this as a benefit to the area. And we wouldn't be, I mean, having them pay for the complete water, water main, I think is more than more than uh, enough than for any one owner of a property to have to, to bear that burden, which is going to be beneficial to the city and to others for the long run. To, to go and ask for additional legal um, funding, that's kind of like a well that you, you just, you never know when it's going to dry up. And it's not, it's not fair to any, any owner of a corporation, of a, of a land, of a homeowner. Um, I mean, again, we're looking at the the lawsuit would be from from the locals. So let's let's try to be uh, sensitive to what we're asking for, so that we can help each other. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Person Wolf, Elder Person Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I would offer um, Alderman Donahue a, a friendly amendment. I'm I'm extremely you know I cannot vote for an uncapped legal fees, but if we were to Set it, say, at 200,000. Um, you know, that's a, the uh, city administrator alluded to some movement on that issue. Um, I, I think that would be, um, you know, a significant leap for us is, is financially, and then it would still preserve and put a cap on it. And, you know, we could go from there. But I, I would just throw that out for your consideration. Older person, Donahue. I, I would, I would, I would certainly consider a cap just based on my experience we're looking at 400 grand 
We really are. Because it's not only legal fees, it's expert fees. And if you think lawyers are expensive, experts are just as expensive. Um, these cases, the cases that we reviewed that the Department of Administration uh, letter uh, talks about, these are all Supreme Court cases. So we're not, ta we're not we're talking about the trial court level, the Court of Appeals, and then potentially the Wisconsin Supreme Court, potentially. If it is the Supreme Court, then it's over 400 grand. But I, I mean, if, I would agree to 400,000 with the hope that it would certainly not come to that. And maybe there would never even be a lawsuit filed. Alder Person Bellinger, you do have the right to make an amendment to the amendment that's on the floor as long as it limits it or increases it. Um, so you do have that option. I'm okay. just saying I've been involved in some major litigation and it's really expensive. You know, but the, the litigant is going to have to come up with the same resources and have the same financial wherewithal as well. And right now, I don't know if, if that's the case, that they could do that. I would make an amendment to amendment for $200,000. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. KT, we're going to vote on this amendment first to, uh, to change it from an uh, unlimited amount to $200,000. Is there any discussion on this motion to amend the amendment? Uh, Alder Person Lewandowski. I just want to say that Kohler approached us with this annexation proposal, so we're in a driver's seat. And we should not be giving up the rights that we have or paying for, for a possible lawsuit because we would not have this lawsuit if it would not be for Kohler coming to us and wanting to annex all of this property into the city. Thank you. Alderperson Holshue. My question was regarding something else, but I have one question. Let's just say this does go to court and there is litigation and the city of Sheboygan wins the case. Is there any um, way that the city or town of Wilson would have to pay our attorney fees? Again, it depends on how the litigation uh, would be initiated, uh, but the, again, the answer is likely not. Okay. But I, my question is not about this amendment. Okay. Alderperson Donahue. No. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I made the original second on, on, on the motion to uncap it uh, as a compromise. I will go along and see how the vote goes on the 200000 Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen. Yeah, I'm not to so comfortable with putting this cap on. I don't think it's appropriate that we were just pulling numbers out of thin air if we don't have any documentation or any data backing it up um, and having a good, um, good number that really reinforces what we're going to get ourselves into. Thank you. Seeing no more discussion, would the clerk please call the roll on this amendment to the amendment? Okay, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the amendment is to change from an unlimited to $200,000 in legal fees, is that correct? Yes. So an I vote would be to change it to 200000 Other person drawn? Wait, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I... Wait, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> we'll remember it. Hold on. Okay, I've got Alder Person drawn. Alder Person Ross? Nay. Thank you. That was a nay? Yes. Thank you. Eight ayes, eight noes, tie vote. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. So now we have a motion on the floor that's been amended to $200,000. Is there any further discussion on the motion to amend? All the person holds you. Mine is for after this. No. Any other discussion? Okay, then we're voting on the amendment to uh, increase the uh, legal fee uh, cap to two hundred thousand dollars. Would the clerk please call the roll? We just did that. No, we just did that. No, we just did that. Well, we 
We just did that. Amend to change. One more time after we voted on an amendment to the amendment, don't we have to vote on the main amendment? You do have to vote on the main amendment. For the amendment. Voting on the amendment as amended. The main amendment. The, the one with the no cap. With yep. I'm no sorry. Name. Are, we your, voting, yes. are we voting that on on the motion that? Kohler picks up our entire tab, or is that just no. like forgotten? We, we just changed that from the from no cap to two hundred thousand dollars. We amended that amendment, so now we're voting on the amendment as amended with a cap of two hundred thousand dollars. In essence, you're voting on the very same thing, but because of the process that you used to get there, you've got to vote on it again. And if we don't agree with that, then we're back to the right. Then we, so any, then we don't have any. Then we don't have any. Then then we're back to the 125. I don't like being forced into stuff. We're just back to the main motion. So we are voting to cap it at two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And I vote would be to cap it at two thousand two hundred thousand. Yep. Okay. Alder person drawn. Aye. Alder person Ross? Nay. Thank you. Ten eyes, six no's. Motion passes. Now we're back to the motion to approve the pre-annexation agreement. Is there any other discussion? As amended. It would be to approve as amended. Correct. Uh, under uh, discussion, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if this is the appropriate time or not, but we've all been wondering, are there any questions? Do we have all the answers? I certainly have a plethora of questions that I haven't been able to get answers to. So where amongst um, items number 8.4, 8.5, and 8.6, can I make a motion to hold them all? Till we get more information. We're talking about 8.4, and we've already had chat about three different issues on that alone. Well, if you have a question, you can ask it on this motion. <laughs> I have lots of questions. Well, please go ahead. Now, it's more than just the annexation, though. It's on all three things, or the your pre well, this is This is the pre-annexation agreement. But so if it deals answer? with these conditions, that, that's one issue. If it doesn't, then you should hold that discussion for the next item on the agenda, which is the annexation ordinance. I guess I would like to ask um, Council, Mary Lynn, what were your two other items that you were uncomfortable with with this annexation agreement? Um, actually, my... Uh, the last amendment would be, and, and I would just like Attorney Adams' view on it, uh, I'm concerned that the agreement doesn't provide for any public access along the sand and along the beach. Um, the public trust doctrine gives people access, but you have to have a foot in the water. And so, and I know the Kohler Company is pretty aggressive on these things. That would so. usually be something that would be addressed in a conditional use permit? Not a pre-annexation agreement. City Attorney, do you have any other thoughts there? Well, you're right that it would be typically dealt with in a conditional use permit application, and we're not there. Um, a pre-annexation agreement could conceivably cover this area um, if you wanted it to. Um, the issue would be how do we do that? How do we craft language um, at a council meeting? Right. And, and, and that's my concern. We have to remember that when this goes to the City Plan Commission for the conditional use permit, we have nothing to say about it. We have the mayor and one alder, the city engineer, and four community people who will be making these decisions. The community folks are great, but unelected officials have the majority of, uh, you know, some, the, the majority of those votes. So I, I'm not comfortable waiting to the conditional use permit this again is, you know, this is speed kills. This is why we, this is why we ought to be taking this just a little bit more easy. But I, I, I guess I would, 
I, I guess I would offer an amendment that would uh, direct the city attorney to uh, craft language with respect to the public's access along the shores of Lake Michigan on a free basis. Is there a second to that motion second. for amendment? Okay, we have a motion on the amendment on the floor on access. Any other discussion on that amendment? I, I just, to, just to clarify, since I'm the one being asked to draft the language to add to it, um, is there a level of detail to which you wish to get it? I mean, I, obviously you get the, as you've uh, talked about the public <coughs> access doctrine, but are you talking about further than the high water line or are there issues that you wish to? I think taking it to the high water line, although I don't know because we didn't really have a chance to discuss that in the finance committee and I haven't seen the maps where the, where the high water mark is. Um, uh, but that would be traditionally where the access usually ends. Yeah. So um, I, have you looked at the maps? I've looked at the maps, but honestly, on the, that particular issue, um, you know, I haven't studied the land formations or anything, nor would I be the right person to do that because I'm right. a lawyer, not a, not a geologist well, or whatever. Well, and, and I would just say that um, it, it, language that would adequately protect public access would be, would be fine, and, that it, you know, checking with folks who have more of that particular knowledge. Okay. Um, is that and that, that would be pres and that would be uh, placed in the pre-annexation agreement. And as a clarification, and contingent uh, pass or approval would be contingent on that. Is, right. Right. Yeah. is clarification okay with the second? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, under further discussion, Alderperson Nelson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, maybe the uh, city attorney could further clarify that, but it's my understanding that the Wisconsin State Constitution guarantees the uh, access along the beach. Is that correct? It does. Um, I think all the person Donahue's uh, concern is, though, that sometimes there have been developments along the lake that are technically not in violation of, of those rules, but are practically um, make it very difficult or impossible to gain access. And so uh, I would read the direction, if the council approves this, I would read uh, the direction uh, basically as ensuring that there are no structures, no development that make it uh, difficult for the public to exercise their right of access. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Alderperson Boren. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Adams, are we adding this on to some other item in the uh, in the agreement, or is this going to be a new item that you're adding? This this would be a, a new item. It would likely fall under uh, five, and so the result of it would be to either add. Well, I wouldn't put it as as letter T, but I would put it somewhere in number five, and then everything else would would from after I move it down. What, would, what page is that letter. on? Uh, number five begins on page eight, but it continues all the way through almost the end of the document. We have, uh, I don't know what number, uh, the letter S is in the alphabet somewhere around 20, but uh, we have about 20 items uh, okay. on there and it would add another one. All right, thank you. Alderperson Trester. I just wanted to uh, clarify one thing. Uh, I had asked the question when hiking along the lake shore by Whistling Straits, I was told unless my feet were wet, I was on private property. So I think it's very important that we do stipulate because according to the state, if my feet are wet, I could walk by the beach, Whistling Straits, but if I'm on the sand, it's their property. It's a little more complicated than that, but uh, generally the, the Constitution does protect access up to the high water mark, which is why people use that wet foot analysis. Well, this is a lake. It's not an ocean where the tide comes in and out. So I would like to be able to be assured that if people wanted to walk along the sand, 
that they would have permission to do so. And that would be the purpose of this motion. It would be to direct that the rights that people do have uh, in the state of Wisconsin uh, to access would be protected. And uh, obviously, Kohler, it would be illegal for Kohler to um, totally block that access, but it is not necessarily illegal to do things on their own property that really make that difficult. And so I would see this as, um, you know, basically a direction that we include in the pre-annexation agreement, an agreement with Kohler that they're not going to do anything that makes it more difficult for the public to, to uh, have the access that they have the right to under the state constitution. Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen? Uh, my motion is not to remain at this moment. I withdraw. Okay. And uh, Chad Pelichick? Thank you for the discussion. I can support that. I think um, the challenge is, is the fact that there's some places have riparian rights where riparian rights go all the way out to the water's edge. So to Rose Alderman Trester's comments, that would be the case. In some places it doesn't. We have not seen a site plan. We have not seen where the property corners are. We haven't seen where anything of that nature is. So um, yeah, albeit you can put this in the agreement, you may uh, put this in the agreement and direct this to the conditional use permit process and have the planning commission addressed that in further detail um, as part of it because as of now we have not seen a site plan and the maps that are showing are primarily maps of the annexation area. It's not necessarily, you know, right on the property line. That'll all come as part of a final survey. So I think it's premature in nature to understand where that property line is and is it in the water, is it not in the water, and that will all come out as part of the development plans when they submit them. So it, it may behoove you to uh, have some language directing the um, conditional use permit process through the Planning Commission to be able to address this issue. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lewandowski. If we don't know what the site plan is going to be, why are we even voting on it tonight? Are there any other comments? Any other discussion? Alderperson Trester? I have to agree. We have been kept in the dark about a lot of things with this agreement. And we have uh, nothing really but Kohler say so that these things are the way they're going to be. And I would like to see us put this on hold until we have some more information. Your Alder person Truster, you're ignoring the comments I made earlier and the ones that Chad Pelichek just made that this will be addressed in more detail in that uh, conditional use permit. Okay, but once we've already voted for the annexation and once we've already voted for this, we can't go back. And I'm saying put this thing on hold until we have more information. We will not put it on hold until we have it has to be voted on before we will schedule anything on a conditional use permit. They have to get all of their permits before we can condition, uh, send out a, can, can prove a conditional use permit. Then, then some of us are going to vote no on the annexation. Well, that may be. Is there any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion on the floor to create a clause in the agreement that would address um, waterfront rights. Um, you ready for a vote? You want me to read it? Does everybody understand the motion? I think they do. Okay. All those in favor? Well, no, see, we'll do a, a roll call. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderperson person drawn? Aye. Thank you. Alderperson person Ross? Aye. I didn't hear. Re please repeat that, Alderperson Ross. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Fourteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Under further discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. Yeah, so I think that was just an example of us shooting from the hip again. Um, and I think that we're really picking uh, things from the air, so I move that we refer this back to finance. Second. 
We have a motion on the floor to refer back to finance. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for refer re referral to finance. Hold on just a second. Alderperson Duran? Nay. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. I've got to, I hit the wrong button. I've got to change my vote to nay. I can change it for you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Alden Boren. Nay, you said? Yes. Nay. Nine eyes, seven no's. Motion passes. Next we'll go on to 8.5 is general ordinance number six of 1718 by Alderperson Born and Sorensen annexing territory to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Born. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the ordinance. Sorry. Thank you for that motion and support. The ordinance is before you for discussion. Other person holds you. Thank you. I have a number of questions that I have. Um, let me begin by, we have gotten a number of emails from a lot of different people. And I've been able to put three of the questions that were raised to rest. One being that um, Daryl attended a meeting in Madison, which he did not. Um, attorney Adam signing paperwork that the attorney from Kohler drafted, he reviewed them, changed some of the verbiage, and signed them, but he did not just get the letters from the uh, Kohler attorney, so that was nonsense as well. And I can't remember what the other one is, but I'm concerned because during um, public forum and these hearings, we listen to what everyone says, but we cannot comment as to what they say, and we pretty much just listen. And, and my, que my questions are, and I'll save the biggest one for last, is um, I'm assuming just by all the chat that I heard from the town of Wilson that nobody fertilizes their grounds or anything. They're not allowed to do that in the town of Wilson. So there's absolutely no fertilizer going on there because the golf course said that they reduce it to 20%. It wasn't that they didn't have any the, in that meeting. It said 20%. Um, I still struggle with land ownership, that people who own property have the right to decide what they're going to do with that property. I don't, I'm, I don't believe that we have the right to tell them, just like we wouldn't have the right to tell you who you could or couldn't sell your property to, and it bothers me. Um, we did not have, um, they're saying that we, the city of Sheboygan did this all secretly. Well, Kohler came to the city and filed an application to do an annexation. There was nothing secret about that. So I, you know, I, I'm getting so I'm resentful for all the different things that and insidious remarks that they keep making about the city when we didn't bring this on ourselves. They came to us. Am I in favor of it? Maybe not so much. But I don't like to be. Um, you know, get off the cross, somebody else needs the wood. I don't think that we constantly need to, to take the barrage of, of this. And, and, you know, you guys, the town of Wilson has had three years to work on this. They've sent all their information to us to read, so we've read three years' worth of their research. And some of it has turned out not to be the greatest tad bits of information. But, and, I, and, and we should look at the past behavior. And the past behavior, I recall very, very distinctly with the field of dreams. And I remember being threatened, and I remember being harassed, and that was all for the field of dreams. This doesn't seem like it could go much differently. But the one part that I'm very, very concerned with, 
and needs someone to answer the question is for the property on Stahl Road where um, the 80, I forgot how old he was, fellow is forced to have to go into the annexation. I totally do not agree with that. And I wonder if someone could explain to me why we're forcing this person to annex. I don't understand why we would do that to someone. City Attorney, could you respond to that? So um, the statute uh, talks about how annexation occurs. So I'm going to go back to basics first of all and explain a little bit of how um, municipal, municipal government works in the state of Wisconsin. We have three types of municipalities, towns, villages, and cities. Towns are designed to be sort of the, um, you know, the, the areas, the rural areas that are lightly populated, don't provide any services. Uh, cities and villages are uh, the level up. So when the statutes were, were written, um, you know, basically having to do with the responsibilities of cities, villages, and towns, annexations, the idea was that you would have cities and as cities would grow, they would annex uh, the area around them. Um, in the state of Wisconsin, uh, there have been some changes to those laws that have made it a little more difficult for annexations uh, to occur. Uh, you'll see in some other states where they haven't made those changes, uh, annexations ha have occurred um, you know, much more often um, and generally you know, to the benefit of the general public. Uh, that being said, however, the state uh, does provide um, that there are a number of types of annexation. And because annexation does deal with the best interest, not necessarily of one single property owner, but of uh, a larger group of people, uh, it is possible to do a non-unanimous annexation. Um, they, and that was what was done here. Uh, in this case, uh, five of the six electors in the area signed on. Um, had there been, uh, there are some uh, safeguards in the law. If enough uh, electors in the area had been found uh, to challenge, uh, they could have done that, and uh, it, you know there there would be uh, some additional requirements uh, in that regard. Uh, but the state law does indicate that there is an understanding that whenever you're annexing, you're generally doing what's best for. Uh, or hopefully you're doing what's best for the group rather than the individual. And so sometimes you're going to bring people in uh, that don't necessarily want to be brought in. They're not losing their property. Uh, they're just simply becoming citizens of the city of Sheboygan because it is now recognized that they are uh, no longer in a uh, rural area, but they're now in a populated area. Can I respond yes. to that? Please. Is is there any way, shape, or form that we can make sure that this fellow on Stahl Road is not part of the annexation? Because if we're going to force him, I'm going to be forced to say no to this. The, the answer to that is no, uh, because the city does not control the borders. We can't amend the borders to the, to the boundary agreement. Uh, when Kohler came in with their request, we're bound by those uh, even though we may not like those uh, boundaries for any number of reasons. Thank you so much. Administrator Hofflin. Uh, for approximately an um, hour, hour and a half, uh, we spent considerable discussion on the pre-annexation and development agreement. Uh, I think some good changes were made, very thoughtful deliberation. Ultimately, a motion was made to refer it back uh, to finance and personnel. Uh, I know during that discussion, Several of you, including um, uh, Alder Donahue, identified that her concern was that you, uh, in essence, are in the driver's seat of making these decisions and you're not deferring it, uh, some of these critical things to the City Plan Commission. Um, the provisions of the pre-annexation agreement, in fact, could be covered by a conditional use permit. And ultimately, if there is a vote on the annexation ordinance and then on the permanent zoning, then in essence you've lost, I think, your right to approve a pre-annexation pre agreement. As I mentioned, it could be covered by the City Plan Commission, but that would take you as elected officials out of that decision-making process. Uh, I sense that there is significant interest by the Common Council in proceeding with that pre-annexation agreement. And so un until you are able to take a vote at a subsequent meeting, as, re as a result, I would recommend that you table uh, the next two items on the agenda to allow the 
uh, pre-annexation and development agreement to have its due consideration and brought, be brought back before the Common Council as a whole. Thank you. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and I would uh, certainly support that. In the meantime, um, uh, and I will make that motion if it's debatable. It is debatable to send back to committee if that's what you're doing. Well, I, I think, to, I to think hold? What, it, this is a motion to hold. That's debatable as well. It's similar. And the only reason I say that is the chair of the uh, town of Wilson <clears throat> and the chair of the town of Wilson plan commissioner here, and I would move to open the floor to them for their brief remarks and to answer questions that we might have of them. Um, I think as the Kohler company was able to present at the uh, <coughs> Uh, at the plan commission, we should uh, allow the, the town of Wilson officials uh, to speak briefly uh, regarding their um, regarding their concerns. Is there any objection to opening the floor to John Edmond? I Miller. object. I object. I, I think we should do it at a later date so we can. Okay, have uh, we have a, a, a request to open the floor. Uh, we're putting that up to a vote. Uh, would the clerk please call the vote for opening the floor to the town chairman John Edmond? Can I just back up once because you had a motion to hold. That's holding. So, so okay, we've got that seconded. Right. And now you're going to make an additional motion. And, and this is just for the purpose of bringing Mr. Emmon and Roger Miller, who's chair of the plan commission, forward to answer any questions that might be on people's minds now because as Alder Holshue said, when we listen to people, we're not able to respond to them or to ask questions and this would be an opportunity to do that. So as there is some opposition, I would move formally that uh, floor pri privileges uh, be granted to these two individuals. And was there a second to that? I'll second that. Alderman I'm Truster. Sorry. Sorensen, either one. Sorensen. Okay. Po yeah. Point of order. So w was that two motions? Can we only vote on one motion at a time? We're only doing one motion at a time. So which motion are we opening the floor to two people and it was the town? The town chair, chair. and the chair of the plan commission okay. for brief remarks and to answer questions. Okay, so we understand the motion we're voting on. Clerk, please call the roll. All the person drawn. Aye. Other person, Andy Ross. Aye. Thank you. Nine eyes, seven no's. Motion passes. Gentlemen, please uh, approach the uh, podium. Floor is yours. <clears throat> uh, good evening. Uh, my name is, is John Eamon. And uh, I am the, the chairman of the town of Wilson. And I would really like to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I, I, I think that we may be able to add some, uh, an, answer some questions that you have, in particular, uh, Roger Miller, um, who has a lot of technical expertise in this. Um, there's been a lot of, I, I agree with one of the aldermen, uh, alder persons saying that there's been a lot of misinformation around this. And, you know, we're here um, to try and talk about what, uh, what the objective facts are. Uh, my message for you uh, this evening is to really uh, seriously, seriously consider the possibility that the path you are going down with this annexation and zoning um, and particularly the rushed way you were going about it, which I know a number of older persons had con some concerns over that, um, without the proper due diligence and debate, is a, it's a very precarious one. And uh, uh, we feel it's an unnecessary one, um, you know, for you to, to reach the goals and get to where you want to be. Um, I, I really hope that you understand that this type of non-unanimous annexation it, they're rarely used and they tear communities apart. 
I mean, you can Google it. That's the first thing that you're going to read. It, it's plain and simple. Um, your own manager of planning and zoning acknowledged this in emails to Kohler Company on May 19, 19th when he said this. This is going to be a very controversial request, so it's imperative that the Kohler Company provide all of the justifications they can as to why the Plan Commission and Common Council should annex this property. I think that's sound advice. Um, he also added that these commissioners and all the persons are, are going to be on the hot seat, and uh, I understand how that hot seat feels. Um, he also said that uh, another issue I believe Kohler Company will need to be prepared to address is the fact of annexing people's property that do not want to be annexed. You should be prepared to appropriately address this sensitive issue. Um, I agree with that. And uh, there is not only, you should know that there is not only one residence that is being forced to annex, there are several. The, the five uh, people that I believe that signed the petition Four of those are, are, are rentals. They're not even property owners. They're, they're renters of two Kohler-owned properties. The, the fifth um, is, is a woman who uh, I've talked to, and she told me the reason she voted for it, because she was approached by the Kohler company to purchase her home. And she felt that if she signed that, she, that would put her in a better position to get as much money for her property as she wanted. There's nothing wrong with that. I told her my advice to her was do what's best for you. Um, but you have to realize that these five signatories are not looking at the best interests of the community in mind. They're looking at their, their own interests. Um, and it, the owner of, uh, of uh, Riverdale Golf Course is being asked to, required to annex a portion of his land. So now part of that golf course is in the, would be in the city, part would be in the town. And there are other property owners along this path that would be required to annex against their will as well. So, so please keep that in mind. Um, I hope you also realize how damaging this annexation will be to the town of Wilson. Um, and I'm telling you, it's really stressing our, our residents. I've heard from countless numbers of people over the past several weeks, and, and they're, they're mad as heck, and they have no idea. They're in disbelief how this could even happen to them. Um, not the golf course necessarily. That's not what they're talking about. Some are, some are for it, um, uh, but it's this anti forced annexation upon them. Um, and, and as you saw this evening, um, you know a lot of people are frustrated that they're not able to talk to you face to face about the annexation. Um, they, they were kind of limited. Although they were kind of creative, uh, they were really limited to to the zoning. Um, and to that zoning, and Roger's going to talk a little bit more about this, but I hope you also realize that the request for SR5 zoning in this annexation territory, it obviously goes against your, uh, your long-term comprehensive plan and, and your, your, uh, your zoning map. And that's why you have that before you this evening to amend the zoning map. Um, but the reason that you are, you are you are uh, rezoning to SR5 is, is because, it, it's not because the zoning change is consistent with the characteristics of that land um, or with the permitted uses in the surrounding properties. Um, it's instead to accommodate the request of, of one landowner. And uh, John, yes. Um, right now, uh, the item that's on us, our agenda is just the ordinance to do the annexation. The zoning is a different item, so if we could keep the presentation to the annexation, I'd appreciate it. Okay, fair enough. Um, I will also ask you to, to, to seriously take a moment and reflect and really ask yourself if this type of, of hostile annexation um, aligns with the values of our community and if it sets a good example for how local government should behave. Um, I also hope you realize how inept that DOA report is, and not because of its conclusion. Um, that doesn't surprise me really at all, but because of the really <laughs> almost absurd way in which the DOA justifies their conclusion. Um, not only do they, we believe they shoot themselves in the foot by misinterpreting case law, um, but they make this absurd claim that the Black River neighborhood 
uh, and the Kohler property itself, make, made up almost entirely of Duno Forest, is urban in nature. Uh, my goodness, folks, come on. I mean, how, how can anyone say that or anyone believe that really with a, a straight face? Um, so I hope you realize that's why we really seriously question. The DOA's uh, report obviously is advisory to you. We just don't feel like you're getting good advice. And we feel it's much more politically uh, uh, derived than it is really legally justified. So, you know, related to that, you know, I, I, lastly, I hope you understand why non-unanimous annexations often lead to litigation, and they are very expensive. Um, and I, I suspect that you do know that now, <laughs> um, because that was all part of your, your pre-annexation uh, agreement. So I, I guess with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Roger uh, to talk about a few more of these issues in a little bit more detail. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, John and I both have busy day jobs, just all of you, and it's in our volunteer roles that we spend our nights like this. Um, so we understand the position you're in. Um, also, each of us um, in our day jobs work far beyond just Town of Wilson or far beyond just the city. We have financial and business interests in both. We have citizen interests in, in both. In fact, um, our radiuses of, of really community interest are not only just the county, but well, for John's are confined to the county, but for me it goes well beyond. Um, I did plan on just five minutes, but this floor and you folks have brought up a couple of issues that are directly germane to annexation. Um, and I'm now confused on uh, Councilperson's Donahue motion. Uh, did that motion read to open the floor to only the annexation subject or to both? Because it would be more efficient to do both. But if you want them one at a time, um, I would like uh, to for us to be able to provide town input on zoning because that also directly affects adjacent lands. If, if you make a presentation on zoning, we have to do that when the next question is on the floor. So you need to just deal with the annexation. I shall zone. do so. Thank you. Um, and, and related, and zoning is really the major issue um, because zoning is relatively easy to change as needed on individual parcels through a rather routine process which your plan commission leads. But of course, the annexation is a much more durable, complicated issue that involves many other factors. Um, and Administrator Hofflin introduced an idea tonight that, to my knowledge, is the first public information of, and it's the first that I heard, um, going to this Town of Wilson plat map where City of Sheboygan boundaries which I agree with Department of Administration um, reviewer Eric Schmidtke, our boundaries are inconveniently irregular for a number of purposes. Um, but they're not irregular because of either the town or the city doing any annexation actions. They are all the result of over the years of successive, successive unanimous consent annexations. In fact, if we go back a ways, uh, the Zimbo Mink Farm, which is an anomalous island within the city, um, that and the Conoco Oil Refinery, which was here, where the Piggly Wiggly Complex and stores are, were well outside of the city back when those things happened. Um, so uh, there's some older history that neither the city nor the town have exerted a municipal effort to try to clean up in the way that we handle it right between Town of Wilson uh, Public Works and Dave Beeble's Public Works in the city is we've always collaborated together to provide convenient services um, to divvy up snow plowing, we talk about road budgets. In fact, right now in the course of planning along with the county is the very important upgrade of Wheaton Creek Road from 12th Street to South Business Drive. 
and the county will be presenting that plan. So no matter what happens with annexation, in the town we're going to continue to participate with your public works to provide good service economically to all citizens in both the town and the city. Now, uh, a brand new idea that just the city introduced this last week, in spite of Kohler Company saying uh, for three years, and Kohler Company has done some good uh, water supply well tests for test wells in their property, which is this white zone, that um, notwithstanding some of Tana Wilson's citizen concerns, and I would like to help separate that Tana Wilson citizens are speaking on their own behalves. Um, John and I are speaking officially on the part of the town, but you did hear Tom Stobe, a town uh, a commissioner, and Nancy Desjardins speak on some broader issues. Yes, Chad, thank you, <laughs> on some broader issues. Uh, but John and I are going to really confine ourselves to, to the subject issue. Now, the issue that uh, uh, Mr. Hoffman has just brought up is, in addition to this idea last week that instead of Kohler Company using wells, Kohler will spring for 1.8 miles of city water main from here down to here, and that only came up last week. Um, and, uh, and that won't be able to serve land to the west or east because that's state park it, and town residences which already have water wells. It won't be able to serve uh, existing residences to the west because those are already served by private water wells. But what Mr. Hufflin said tonight is the real idea is if we put that water line in and then if we put another one in here and then put a connecting loop, which is always a good idea for water mains. In fact, it's not a good idea to have a dead-end water main to just a seasonal demand because that's uh, a big frost um, issue. What, what, is, what he's announced tonight and, and now is a bigger elephant is uh, apparently just announced tonight city plans to be structuring water supply so that in addition to annexing this property, they'll have infrastructure in place to begin annexing all of section 16, all of section 15, all of section 10. Think about that in your annexation considerations because that's never been mentioned before, never talked about before. It wasn't before your plan commission. You guys haven't talked about it. Your water utility, which is headed up by Joe Trueblood, bright guy, he used to work for me, his chief engineer, Rich Dale, used to work for me. That's because working in the public sector, tough as it is, is easier than private consultancy. Um, I stopped in to talk to them. Both of them were out in the field, so I talked to Damien, junior engineer, and that was just last, early last week. And he said, gee, this idea was just presented to us. We haven't had time to even begin our studies on it, but city has said yes, they are now asked to begin that process. Um, the idea of instead of just an 8 or 10 inch main being 16 inch as you mentioned, typical rule of thumb is 120, 150 bucks a linear foot for 1.8 miles. I'll let Roger, you do the arithmetic. Roger, could you please get back on, on the yeah. annexation? You're, you're getting into water. Well, services are directly related to annexation. In fact, they are the normal valid reason to justify an annexation. So you can't separate the two. So at any rate, a typical cost is 120, 150 bucks a lineal put for 16 inch water line. That's not counting the road repair cost. So just for that first segment, you're probably looking in the range of one to one and a half million for that little bit. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about any of the other services. Originally, Carla Company said to the city, we need a city sewer because the city treats it better. Um, last week, John and I gave council through Sue Richards an official submittal called uh, Notes to Council. Now, those are officially supplied even though they don't appear in your acceptance tonight, which surprises me. Um, 
you don't have to answer the question, but I hope all of you have those in your possession. There's about four pages and a lot of information that's key information that if you're not informed of, you really have no idea of the myriad of issues that are involved in services and annexation. Now, uh, I'm going to touch briefly on the DOA letter. Uh, town's attorney for that, expert on that, is Bob Zineman. He lives now in Vancouver. He used to live in Wisconsin. He spent a number of years in DOA doing Eric's job. When And the reason the town submitted, oh, so in DOA review, DOA receives the petition, then they receive any written inputs. The town, of course, provided written input. That information is in the packets you got for notes last week. If you haven't reviewed that, which of course your plan commission couldn't because the issue came up so quickly, so just so you know, the plan commission's review couldn't even consider a lot of the information that was its duty as due diligence to consider. Now, Eric says the reason, or he says, although this annexation geometry is not ideal, uh, that he thinks it's in the public interest because he's, in his opinion, the Timberlake subdivision, which is right here, is of urban character. In, in some more information you're going to get tonight, which John is going to hand out, there are photographs at these numbered locations, and there's a key map on that that shows you the nature of that subdivision, which is even uh, more natural than the rest of all of this area which is in the town with residents served by private wells, but Eric feels should all be annexed to the city because he feels it's of urban nature. Um, also in that packet is information on SR5 zoning. I won't talk about that. It's self-explanatory. Then he opines because that's of urban nature, this too should be annexed even though it's the most natural lands. Now I'm going to talk briefly about how contrived this connection is to the city, because um, you really need to know about that, because there is no reason that the city should just say yes, and I don't think our citizens will let us, but it will be up to the town board and citizens. I don't think they're going to say, oh yeah, it's okay, run a water line down here, annex this now, and now start working on all of these sections. I don't think that's going to fly. Uh, haven't asked them, but that's the general gist of it. In the annexation petition, you may not have gotten a colored version. So this blue geometry is the same geometry as this. Um, this first connection is important. And there's a detailed photograph in the handouts John will give you. But the beginning of the connection to the city begins with this large lot that's in the city. It's a high-end home right here next to the golf course. In front of it is a rather new house right along double E. This house has long had, since its beginning, a private water well, its sanitary discharges, directly to the town of Wilson Sanitary System. Um, most of that lot is floodplain and wetland. It cannot be developed or subdivided into any more residences. As our Sheboygan County economic developer says, we need lots more land for more residences. As I go down through this, land, through this string, you will see there is not one opportunity for another residence for this annexation, um, nor is any proposed. The next land down is the western portion of Guy Miller's recently acquired Riverdale Golf Course. He is not a consenter. He did not sign what he was told by Kohler Company. Didn't seem to make sense with him. Now we're going to go down south a little bit. So this bit is right through here. Now we're going to go down to this, which is actually some land, a wooded wetland owned by the city that's an L shape that goes this way. That, of course, is in there. The city is not an elector, so it doesn't get to sign the, the elector petition. The elector petition for the annexation has five signatures. Two in one rented house, two in another rented house, one landowner. I'll get to that next as the basis for annexation.
Moving down the string a bit, this is the city-owned lot. Now it jogs east across the middle of a lot that the fella died. It's in an estate. There, so there's no elector owner representative. So uh, they can't, uh, can't even be a signature. But they're not consenting. It even divides their lot uh, between city, or excuse me, town, city, town. Now it crosses across some more of the golf course. And now it heads east a little bit. What is the one of the most gerrymandered things you'll see? Roger, uh, to, it's already been 20 minutes, and this was supposed to be a brief presentation. So could you please wrap it up? Okie doke. Um, I'm having to make up for no opportunity for the town to speak to the plan commission. My only intent is for you folks to have some idea of what you're getting into. So I'll wrap it up. So this house is 40% of the signers of the petitioners. Apparently, um, they need services or something, even though all houses around them don't. Well, John has described that was recently purchased by Cola Company. The sellers live in it. Now we cross these other lands, avoiding houses that objected. We come to Nina Staple. John talked about that. Uh, she was a to I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you don't have the floor. Um, her land cannot be developed. Now we have the second house that was purchased by Kohler that has renters. Now we go up the driveway to a Kohler subdivision, which is almost 20 years old but not fully developed. For some reason, uh, in the annexation is a large part of the state park that cannot be developed, and then we get to that property. So if you'd please read the notes that you were given, Last week, as soon as we knew this got on the agenda, because your agenda only came out recently, you will have just begun to be informed of some of the issues. There are a whole lot more. Thank you very much, Roger. I'd like to call up David Beeble. <laughs> David Beeble. David prepared some information for us on past uh, history and annexations. And I'd like to open up the floor to him for that presentation. Thanks, Mayor. Chad, can you remove those uh, maps that are blocking David's map? Thank you. It, it's been a long night. Um, very emotional. Um, heard from a lot of residents, many from the town of Wilson, some from the city of Sheboygan. But tonight really is a watershed moment in the history of the city of Sheboygan. The city of Sheboygan is over 150 years old. And over its history, opportunities for growth and expansion have been presented to prior councils in the past. And in front of you, these maps in what's on your table, the eight and a half of 11, depicts the history of the city of Sheboygan's growth in its history of 150 year plus. There's, three, there's 388 <coughs> annexations that have occurred over the history of the city of Sheboygan. 388. Growth and expansion of cities is not only necessary, but essential for the overall health of a community. Um, there's an author, David Rusk, um, great book, Cities Without Suburbs. And he states, when, city, when a city stops growing, it starts to shrink. Bad state laws can hobble cities. Neighbors can trap cities. Old cities become complacent. Young cities are ambitious. And listening to a lot of the discussion takes me back about 30 years ago when the same issue was occurring on the north side of Sheboygan, when the town of Sheboygan had well, well issues. Same issue. We're going to be good neighbors. We don't want to be annexed. Let us put our own water system in. We can have boundary agreements. We can share. Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at that example. Let's just take the last 20 years. In 1990, 
the city of Sheboygan had a census population of 49,587. Ten years later, in 2000, the census, that population was 50,792. And the most recent census figure in 2010, the city of Sheboygan's population was 49,288. And according to the Department of Administration in 2016, our population is 48,653. I think that's a decrease in population, not growth. Let's take, now, let's take the town of Sheboygan, who 20, 30 years ago we talked about non-annexing because we want to be good neighbors. In 1990, the town of Sheboygan's population was 3,866. In 2000, that population grew to 5,874. And again, 2010, that census population in the town of Sheboygan now is 7,271. 2016, the Department of Administration, their estimate, 7,435. They virtually doubled in 20 years. They've also had some major commercial development, as we're all well aware of. All the while, the city, constrained by its neighbors, not being able to expand, has lost population, further burdening the remaining tax base. Even our neighbors to the south, during this same time frame, has grown about 14.5% in their population. Annexations are fundamental and critical for cities to thrive. Without annexations, cities need some form of regionalization, shared revenue agreements in order to be successful. I haven't heard one offer tonight about shared revenues, sharing, sharing tax base, so forth. The townships thrive because of the close proximity to the city. It's convenient. They can use our parks, they get to shopping districts, they can use the library, they can use the drop-off site, other services without having the burden of having to share in the taxes. Is that fair? The issue tonight that our city faces is not, is not about being a good neighbor. It's not about a golf course. It's not about environmental issues. There's other agencies and experts that will review and do the permitting on that. It's not even about the Kohler company. No. That's not, that's not the issue. The issue is, is the future of the city of Sheboygan. And I'm not talking just five years from now and how are the return on the investment, what's the cost of this infrastructure, and what are, how are we going to pay for this. No, we're talking 50, 100 to 150 years from now, they're going to say we had an opportunity to annex you know, 500 plus acres potentially. And What's, what, what, what's that decision going to be? It's really, I hope we look back on this moment and look at past decisions of the council and say, what if? We had a what if 30 years ago in the town, town of Sheboygan that we have the same dilemma this evening. Many of the past annexations, as you can see, when, when annexations first developed, there were nice square blocks. As, state law changed, you can see the irregular shapes of annexations over time. That's not uncommon. That's the norm. State law practically dictates the proverbial balloon on the string. And it's important. It's important. Quiet, please. Irregular shapes all over this map, if you look at them over the history, are all in that case. Many of the past annexations that the city has had that haven't been an issue is when the city's actually bought the land. We bought land for the business center. We bought the Shuker property. We bought land for residential subdivision growth on North Side. When the city owns it, it's, it's really easy to annex. Rarely do we get a private annexation petition to occur this size. We talked about Sheboygan's population being stagnant for decades. 
while the surrounding townships continue to grow. If the city is continue to progress and grow, annexations will be a necessary and strategic initiative that we're going to have to consider. Put this in perspective, the importance of this annexation. This is the largest annexation of land for the city of Sheboygan since 1959. You can tell, everything, every, this checkerboard, they're all small annexations. Rarely in the history do we get an opportunity like this that's presenting it this evening. So, I ask, when you consider, please remember, the issue is not about being a good neighbor. It's not about a golf course. It's not about environmental issues. And it's not about the Kohler Company. It's about the future of the citizens of sh the city of Sheboygan. Be it's a quiet. If you want to leave, you can leave, but please be quiet. But it's about a golf course and it's about Quiet, please. And you are a disgrace. You are a disgrace. And you should respect this office and this, this council. Please proceed, David. Uh, you get a smart person here that's telling you good things. Goodbye. Mr. Miller, and you chase Mr. Miller out, who knows what he's talking about, and you let some dingling pop there. Oh. <laughs> I'll close, Mayor, for closing this out. Again, the point being is that Annexations are difficult, but they are very necessary. They're very necessary for the long-term growth and vitality of a community. And if we don't take the opportunity to really seriously consider the long-term implications of expansion, we're going to further constrain our existing tax base. And it's, it's proof in our population growth, as the census figures demonstrate. Thank you very much. So now we're back to um, general ordinance. Is there any other discussion on the general ordinance? This is a motion to hold. Yes. There's there a motion, motion on the floor to hold. Has that been seconded? Uh, it was made by Alderman Donahue and seconded by Alderman Truster. Very good. Is there any discussion on that motion to hold? Uh, what, can you repeat? Other person, Sadavio? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we, uh, this is a question directed to the city administrator. If we, not, uh, if, if we choose to hold this, uh, actually what I mean to say is if we don't hold this now and vote on it, aren't we losing our leverage with the pre-annex agreement? Thank you. Uh, it's, it's my opinion, yes. Uh, you would need to rely upon the City Plan Commission to incorporate some of these provisions of the pre-annexation agreement into their conditional use. Some of you expressed concern of delegating that responsibility uh, as opposed to it remaining here at the Common Council level. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. When we're making a, making a motion and voting on uh, the ability to hold uh, don't we need to at least put a date on it? I'd like to make a motion to, to hold it over to July 17th meeting. Thank you for that amendment. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so we have an amendment on the floor to hold it over to uh, July 17th. Is there any discussion on that amendment? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, we can't do a roll call on that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we're going to do a roll call on that. Hold on. They voted aye. I thought everybody said aye. I can't hear, I can't hear a word you're saying. What? She said there was, they said it was all eyes. So do we need to do a roll call? Well, you I just need to be clear. I think you just, I would do it again and wait until the others have voted one way or the other before you ask for the negatives. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Alderperson Duran? Uh, aye. Alderperson uh, Andy Ross? Aye. Andy Ross? He said aye. Said aye. Aye? Okay. Aye. And, and anybody against it? Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Now we have to vote on the uh, motion as amended, so basically it's the same motion. All those in favor of the motion as amended, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Andy aye. Ross? Uh, that was Roman. Aye. Andy Ross? Okay, we have all ayes. That's unanimous yes, again. Aye. Got it. Got it. Okay, now we're moving on to the, um, the zoning document. That's 8.6. I'd entertain a motion to hold that uh, to the same meeting. So move. So move. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All the person drawn? Aye. All the person Ross? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Um, are there any other matters this evening? Yes. Yes. City Attorney. 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2018, and June 30, 2019. <laughs> That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Item 9.2 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of 606 North 9th Street. Uh, the former Social Security office for future use by the city. That will lie over. Those are the other matters under Section 9. Okay, next we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mary. I make a motion to, uh, to convene in closed session under exemption provided in Section 19.85 sub 1 sub e of the Wisconsin Stats where competitive bargaining reasons require the closed session related to a possibility of acquisition and property between South Business Drive and Interstate 43 and for the purpose of conducting sp uh, specified public business where competitive and bargaining reasons require the closed session uh, to wit developing negotiation strategies for collective bargaining. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Would the clerk call the roll for closed session? Alderperson Drawn? Aye. Alderperson Ross? Aye. Thank you. Susie? Susie, could you please vote to go into closed session? So. Scott, could you please vote to go into closed session? Who are you missing? I don't have a complete vote. Who, did, who didn't vote? I need Mike, Mike. Ryan. I don't know if you're going to put me down as I. Who are you missing now? Hmm? Um. <laughs> we haven't finished the vote yet. We haven't then finished the vote yet. Fifteen eyes, one no. Okay, for the public at home, this will end our broadcast for this evening. We will be adjourning in closed session. Uh, we're going to take a three-minute break, and then we'll reconvene. Thank you very much.